And we are live. We are live. Are we? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts, episode 153. No, Brian. 54. No. It's got to 54. Be 154. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. It's okay. Now, now, for people who don't know, Briar is called episode 153 the last three weeks. Episode 152 was 53. You did. You forgot <laughs> to change the name. He didn't He didn't change the name in the text either. And then 153 was actually 153. And here we are, one, 154, which he still calls 153. So be sure to look out for episode 153. I live in a post numbers world. I don't <laughs> see it. numbers, I only see <laughs> equals. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain is just uh, up seeing numbers. A two you know we... and a three and a four all are equal in my mind. They're, each one is just as good as the other. Oh man! Next time no, you get a big big paycheck, I'll swap you all my ones for. You. <laughs> <laughs> there are exceptions. Okay. <laughs> you guys know we didn't fuck up the numbers. We didn't fuck up the numbers in the podcast. The podcast. Now host. We host it live on Podbean and iTunes, and I'm sure one of the fabulously handsome gentleman beside me will put the link in the chat for all of you hell yeah let me link that up right now for you guys this is without a doubt the most requested thing that we've had over the years and it's just been a matter of like nobody's had either a the technical knowledge or b the time to get this thing done so gary thank you so much for getting this done since it's been up even though we haven't really advertised it we've already got like a bunch of people said oh finally it's up on you know i can Whatever your app of choice is for listening to uh, podcasts, it's now available. It's now searchable. It's in iTunes. It's on Podbean. People are really excited to be able to listen to this and not have to watch our ugly mugs. You know, it's a very, <laughs> it's a, it's really an added benefit. They just wanted to avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we've plugged it before, but it's worth mentioning again for every person that does follow and subscribe on it, we will be sending one penis picture um, of one of the random hosts. So. You know, expect a uh, a large member in your mailbox uh, if you follow. We can't promise that, but hopefully it happens. Well, we can't <laughs> promise a large member. We can promise a member. We'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Now, keep in mind, guys, this has been the number one request from people watching this show. The second request is for us to make public our clothesless episodes. So if you guys keep asking, that might happen next. All right, what? Yeah. I'm sorry. What was well, that? We have, no, we're, we're totally nude. Oh, the yeah, nude we, episodes. Yeah. yeah we, yes, we, that's coming we, for sure one day. We don't know when, but we're very excited. All of us, believe me. Oh, we're always we're excited, excited. We do it anyway, Ravi. Oh, I mean, yes, we, we we literally get dressed as we're like getting ready. Like it's yeah. the reason I hit the live button is like as the last piece of clothing goes on. Yeah, Ravi <laughs> took a Robbie normally takes a long time to get dressed, and that's why we're too oh, late. it takes it's us right. Canadians hours. It takes It's ages seductive to get though. I got to say. Yeah. I mean, it it's is. just <laughs> It's a joy to watch every every week. And Robbie does that twirl. You know? <laughs> Great. Must be a Canadian thing. Yeah, definitely. Welcome you can see to the episode. other side of the room. There's like stripper poles. There's everything over there. <laughs> Robbie's really okay. had a, quite the setup. I can't wait for the room tour. Got to get that on YouTube, man. <laughs> oh, my God. You're, you guys are going to love it. That's all yeah. I can say. So Office setup is totally different than what you expect over on Robbie's <laughs> side. <laughs> yes. Well, you expected a gaming setup. No, 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 no. no. I'll give you the real <laughs> deal. The I wasn't a man before the uh, room tour, but I certainly was a man after it, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. Mic drop. Oh, my God, yeah. Gary. <laughs> <sighs> uh, so, I mean, I want to hear what everybody's been playing. I'm going to go first this week, though. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm, I'm gonna go first. Yeah. I have been playing more player unknowns by battlegrounds. Guys, like I really, really enjoy this game. It is such a simple concept. We've talked about it before. Um, but what I am enjoying is you know, some game it's become that game when I have like 15 minutes in my day, like let, let's say last night I'm waiting for my wife to get dressed and we're going out for dinner. I got 15 minutes in my day. You know what? I could run upstairs, play one round. Or if I do poorly, two rounds <laughs> of of battlegrounds. It, it's become that game. It's filled that COD niche that you, COD used to have in my life. Where at any point in time, if I had fifteen minutes or an hour, I could just really quickly run a couple of multiplayer matches. And it's just it's become that game for me. I'm very addicted to this game. I'm having a blast with it. I actually last week was thinking about. I, I was out at work and, you know, doing what I do on a daily basis. And I was this game, I heard about it in the news. It was actually on the radio down here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They were talking about this is one of the most popular 
uh, early release games that have hit Steam. And I, I forget how many players, but it's it's over what two? Is it two million people playing this game? Yeah, they've sold like two million copies already, and things only in early access. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, I, this is something. You guys know I don't traditionally play on PC, but I'm thinking possibly this week it's something I'm going to pick up to try. Yeah, give um, it a shot. At everybody's least. talking about it, and and it sounds like it's a lot of fun. You don't have to do a lot of scavenging and finding parts for a gun. You just drop, you know, drop to the ground and go and handle your business. And I can get down with that. So. You do have to scavenge. Like it, okay. it's 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 core to the experience is you you know you pick your spot where you want to drop from the plane. And you go to that spot, and the very first thing you do is start running around looking for a gun, looking for mods for your gun, looking for armor, looking for a backpack, like that kind of stuff, gearing up. Uh, and then once you've done that, maybe you get one or two houses in, then you really want to check your map. Okay, where am I at, and where do I got to get to? <laughs> and there's a couple of really big stories, actually, this week, Brian, uh, around it, which you may or may not be getting onto, but around the charity event and the console ports. I did so not know about either of those. Consoles? Wait, what? So yes. Xbox and PlayStation have both been confirmed on the roadmap for That's the great news. That's great news. Do they have a uh, do they have a release date in mind? No, Not that yet. would be incredibly optimistic, but X Xbox is apparently the primary console for the port. So mm -hmm. PlayStation's on the roadmap, but Xbox is being considered first for the port. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and then secondly, there was a major charity event. And the reason that I think this is important is that Destiny has um, a great community around it and is well known for the work that it does in the charity space i think it's mm -hmm. unrivaled in the fps space and there's often a, a brush tarred on other fps's that they're very toxic and people are only out for themselves well there was a, a charity event held for gamers outreach which are a charity that work to provide gaming equipment and facilities for people that are less physically abled or, or mentally abled yeah. um, and and you know they're doing a lot of good work in there um, Lyric was part of the event and, and drew absolutely enormous crowds. They actually raised two hundred and twenty thousand dollars in That's this sick. event. That's a lot of money, man. Wow. That is awesome. That's awesome which to hear. Which tells you something about the caliber of the Twitch community that are, and it was a, sorry, it was a Twitch event. I should have said the Twitch community that are supporting this game. So it sounds like they're breeding not just a game that's going to be multi-platform, but also a game that's going to have a strong and healthy community behind it. I would really like to do a foursome with with us on that game like <laughs> oh. I'd, I'd really really enjoy that i think it'd be a lot of fun beastly i really want you to try and get that running on your computer see if you can get it running if you I can't, can't it, you know you game. don't lose anything if you can't get it running because you just return it to steam if it doesn't run uh, well i mean yep. this isn't this isn't like a new pc but it does have a, a gtx 960m you don't think i could play it maybe on low or medium i'm so? hoping so i mean oh, I, I think you would be i play yeah. it on pretty much low all the low settings anyway just to get as good a frame rate as i can yeah, um, especially in a but I would definitely game, try it, Beastly. I'd really like to get the group of us together um, and kicking some ass in there. Robbie, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't sent that, G that card out to you yet. I will oh, try and Briar. remember to do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's all good, dude. It's <laughs> I'm all embarrassed good. to say I just didn't get a chance to do it. So I, I have to go to UPS anyway tomorrow, so I'll, yeah. I'll do it tomorrow. No worries. Yeah. Um, but I, man, I would really like to get the group of us playing that game because... I'll, gra I'll grab it this week for sure. For I think sure. I'll just buy it ahead of time that I, I know that card's coming. I think going by the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, running it on low settings, you're not getting uh, be, the way that game runs. It's still even like if you adjust the draw distance, you can still see players out there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not it's not messing with that. It's just say like, you know the graphically it might not look as good, which it doesn't really make. I a mean, difference. But this this PC plays Rise of the Tomb Raider in 1080p with no it, it hiccups really bad at 4K, but 1080p great frame rate. Yeah, it should be rate, fine. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's worth mentioning that. Player Unknowns is a game in early access and it's being optimized more and more with each week. So even if you get it and it might not run perfectly now, uh, it might be something to keep returning back to. I mean, we were talking about the success of it and just to give a bit more statistics and weight to to, to Briar's um, sort of praise for the game. Yeah. Since that charity event, there's been an additional surge in sales. The game's actually made 11 million in less than a week. That's $11 million in oh. less than a week since wow. that event just to promote it i mean it seems to be like the next big thing it, it's it really does about, it really you know, does Hundred thousand viewers on twitch um average yeah um, it's so, consistently yeah. in the top five or if not top three it's yeah it's up there um and wow. the, you know it it doesn't have that feel that you get from a lot of these other early access games where you know they put it out for early access and then you never hear from the fucking developer again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really, yeah. they do seem to be supporting this game. Yeah. They're talking about bringing new maps to the game, which would be really fun. You know, like uh, they're doing balance changes on weapons all the time. So, 
look, the the core experience of the game is really fun, and uh, getting the four of us together, I think, is just a must happen at this point. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm, I'm so down. And uh, it seems to be endless ways to to play as well, bro. I mean, have you been finding that you're engaging people in different ways and, and oh doing yeah, different tactics now? As I get more comfortable with the game, I find that I'm using grenades more, uh, which are really valuable. Uh, I'm also using different weapons. I'm a lot of the time, the weapon loadout I go with has nothing to do with my plan. It's more my plan has to evolve to what I find for weapons. You know, like if I find shotguns and I can't find a good long range rifle, then, you know, that's how I'm playing the game that round. Mm -hmm. If I find rifles but no shotguns, then it's very, I'm not going to be going in to clear any buildings. You know, like that's just yeah. not going to happen. Uh, so it's, it's very much about that. And as you get better at the game, as you get better at kind of placing your shots and firing and uh, hitting moving targets, because it does take a little bit of practice to do it, uh, you just you start having more and more fun and wrapping up, racking up the kills faster and faster. And like, even if you like, even if you die in the fifties, you still feel like you had a good time. You know, like if out of that hundred people, if you die in that fifties, you still feel like you had a good time. If you do make it to, let's say top 10 or top five, then it's almost always like, oh, man, if I had just done this one thing differently, yeah. you know, like, oh, God. And then you just immediately go back in and try again. You know, it's so quick, addictive. Quick, quick question. Does this game support traditional controllers? Can I plug my Xbox One into it? or is It, it does. You're going to be at a huge disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. So I'm really get my mouse and keyboard game up. Okay. I because you. You are, you're, you're trying to aim at things that are moving. Way faster. Yeah. Well, just so far away, too. Like the pinpoint accuracy. I don't know how much aim assist this game is going to have, but I'm going to guess it's not much. <laughs> and, you know, aim assist with a controller is kind of mandatory. Gotcha. It, it gotcha. sounds like the first time, Brian, that I've, I've really heard you, maybe three weeks now, really animated and passionate about a game that isn't COD or Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. uh, so COD or Destiny, sorry, misspoke. And the other thing I kind of wanted to say, if it's doing this to you, how many other people is this is this doing it to? Because it seems to have mm -hmm. some real sticking power. Mm -hmm. Do you think a game with no overarching story or character progression, because obviously your progression is reset, is something that is going to keep people coming back in six months' time, 12 months' time? Just ask Overwatch that question. Yeah, I do think so. I th I do think they are going to add some character progression. I mean, they do have character progression to a certain point, similar to what Overwatch has, where you know as you play, you get... Uh, tokens basically are points that you can spend on boxes and the boxes have like cosmetic items. So you do feel like every time you finish a match, you are making progress almost like the prestige system in COD where you're constantly kind of, even though it's very slow, like you are getting something for the time you spent in it, which I like. Uh, but the core gameplay is fun. So that's what keeps you playing. You know, it's, if you look at like, uh, you know, Counter Strike. You know, there's no story in Counter Strike, but people can play every day because the core For gameplay years. is amazing. And then the, you start to build friend friendships inside that community, and then you want to, you know, play with your friends. And then, you know, these things just kind of roll on each other. So is is that predominantly what you've been playing for the last week? Has this game uh, that and of... Destiny? Destiny, I've been playing quite a bit of. Um, Obviously, I'm streaming mostly Destiny. I am going to add some more uh, player unknown streams in, though, because I am really enjoying that game, and I do want to share that with my viewers. Um, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of Destiny. Really, what I'm looking forward to right now is Destiny Two. Destiny Two is like literally, I'm going to get my oh chance my to play that in like a week and a half. Yeah, uh, and I, I just want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go crazy. I just want to play. I just want to be in LA. I got Man. my plane all taken care of. I'm flying first class out there and then back. Oh, dude. Yeah. Got my hotel wow, all right. set up. You're yeah. I'm, man. I'm not the man. My dad is the man. He he flies uh he flies all the time. He's constantly he's you got those points. He spends one week at home every five weeks. That's how much he flies. Dang. What? Um, yeah, he's literally wow. in the air. He, he he's he flies multinationally and he's in a new city in the world once a week. Like that's just his job. Wow. Um, so he's got he's got points, you know. He's got airline points. So I say, hey, Dad, I'm flying out to L.A. Hook a brother up, <laughs> and you know the deed gets done. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very fortunate to have that. I mean, everybody doesn't have that kind of situation. I mean, my no, dad, no. taxi driver. That's about it for me. You might know somebody can actually come and pick me up and give me a dollar off. <laughs> Way to go. 
The thing, you know, with that Destiny reveal is that a lot of people got invited to that, but they can't go because they can't afford it. So I feel really lucky to be able to, you know, be in a spot where I can go. And, and I'm, I'm sure you've thought about this, but this is actually going to make you blow up. Even you might not feel this way, but you're kind of a big deal on in Twitch. And I like, keep telling my wife that she doesn't buy it. She doesn't know. I, I tell Kate, <laughs> I tell Kate all the time. Look, I'll tell my wife stuff. She said, "I ain't gonna listen to you." I said, "Do you know who the fuck I am?" <laughs> I'm famous. She, she says, Brett. I said, Beastly motherfucking gamer. <laughs> she doesn't yes. get it. She just hey, doesn't her. get it. No matter how famous you are, it's a bummer. Yeah, it's a bummer. You know, it's really helped now that I got the Briar Rabbit pillows in the bed. I feel like that's really helped out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> spread the awareness around. You got to sell those too. Get yeah. that name out there. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You want to be sleeping with Briar Rabbit, but one way or another, <laughs> let him be your sleeping, pillow. He's sleeping with himself. Shit. <laughs> let, let them have the pillow. I mean, I'm just cuddled up to my bo Briar <laughs> Rabbit body pillow. <laughs> 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 oh, man, that's great, bro. That's awesome. Uh, that's what I've been playing. Really, I'm playing most of my time is just player unknown, Destiny, and salivating over Destiny Two. Uh, that reveal trailer, the reveal happening on, on May fifteenth is just—it's really my focus at this point. Mm. So, oh, uh, I, I, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Gary. Bro, I had a, a question before we moved away from what you've been playing, but the. I guess predominantly you're, you're known as a Destiny streamer, and, and that's really where your success has come from. You mentioned you're going to be doing a bit more uh, player unknown. So mm -hmm. for people that watch you on Destiny and enjoy what you do in Destiny, why, um, I guess, what would they get out of watching you play player unknown? So what is it that, that they, why should they tune in and watch this? What, it's going to be the same atmosphere. It? We're going to have the same, you know, the same people in chat, the same fun atmosphere. Uh, somebody described the chat recently as like a bar and I'm the bartender. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like that is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Great. fucking about and having a good time. You know, it's like, it's just a low stress place to hang out. I like to have fun with the chat. I like to have fun, you know, on the stream. There's going to be about as much skill as there is in Destiny, so very little. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you'll get to see me do some dumb shit on TV, just like you would, or on in uh, Player on Ground, unknown, just like you would in Destiny. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be there myself, so I look forward to it. All right, Robbie, Gary, what have you guys been playing for the last week? Gary, take it away. Are you sure? Okay, yeah, cool. Right. Um, I'm going to sort of run you guys through two things that I've been playing. One of which is Planet Side 2, and the other of which is uh, Yomawari Night Alone. So I'll start off with the uh, Planet Side and, and, and move on. Bless you. Yomawari. No, yeah, no. Yomawari. Bless you again. <laughs> One of my nice, interesting ones. So Planet Side 2, for those of you that, that don't know, is a free to play first person shooter, uh, originally for PC, but then ported over to PS4. Mm. Uh, released on 2012 PC, 2015, I believe, on PS4. But um, still thriving. I mean, it's, it's a couple of years old, but still something that's very, very much playable. So it's an epic sci-fi combat at, at really an unrivaled scale. Um, I think the maps are 64 kilometers squared and have 2,000 player caps on the maps. Wow. So you've got three that's... factions, 2,000 players, 64 square kilometers. Um, and it's kind of like a conquest mode or you know, like a base assault uh, over a progressive network of, of bases. And it feels like... I guess there's four continents to play on and it's an ever persistent and moving map and feels to me like the closest thing I've ever played to a real full scale sci-fi war realized that the likes of which that Battlefield and um, I guess to an extent Battlefront have tried to do. So have any of you guys played Planet Side 2 in any of its variants? I, I, I dabbled with it. Me and my wife, you know, we wanted to try something free to play. This is probably close to a year and a half, two years ago. So I don't know how much the game has changed. You know, it was a traditional first-person shooter with jumping and boosting abilities. And but we we probably only put five or six hours in and kept it on our PS4s for a long time, always mm -hmm. promising to get back to it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but the thing that happened is, and it probably happens to a lot of gamers, when you have games you pay for versus games you get free, somehow it's just a mental thing. You feel like you're getting more out of what you pay for than what I have you're that getting. Too. Yeah. It, it happens to a lot of people. I mean, for instance, if someone gave you a free video game and you went out and spent $100 on a deluxe edition of a video game, 
which one would you play? You'd probably play the one that you actually put your hard-earned dollars into versus the one that you didn't do anything for. And I think that happens to a lot of people when it comes to free to play games. All, just what you say, B. So it happens to me all the time. Like if I'm playing Destiny, which I paid for like a year ago, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden like an awesome game like Far Cry comes out and I just paid sixty dollars on it, I gotta play Far Cry Four like constantly. Oh yeah, get that shrimp <laughs> off. Oh yeah, it's not like it's still sitting in the in the sealed wrap or anything, right, Brian? No, he took it back. Uh, but <laughs> oh, that's right, you did. For, for most people. <laughs> Uh, my, my scenario probably holds still. We all know that Briar has destiny and, you know, Peter Dinklage attached to his heart. Um, his little Dinklage, yes. Yeah, he, you know, he has, he has, I hear he has two Dinklages. Lots but, of Dinklages to go around. But for most people, uh, and, and in most gaming scenarios, if you have games you get for free versus games that you pay for, usually the ones that you gravitate towards first are the ones that you pay for. But I, I from what I can remember, we had a good time playing Planet Side 2. I didn't know uh, the statistics and how big the game was or the fact that there's 2,000 players per uh, per map, but yeah. I knew that it was huge. I mean, you look across the map, you it's like playing uh, Breath of the Wild. You look across these giant uh, mountains, and you can actually go over there, and you, you finally make your way over to these other territories, and there's giant wars going out, and you hide in the trees, shoot people. You're wondering what the hell is going on. I probably should have stuck with it, but as I said, it's just that mental issue of this game mm -hmm. being free, this game I just paid for, let me play the game I paid for so I can feel like I'm getting my money's worth rather than a game that you get for totally free. So that's, my apologies. That's, that's fine. It's a fair point. I just kind of wanted to gauge um, a level of, of if you guys have, have tried it, if you guys have played it. I mean, from my I never played it, but I definitely like to try it. it yeah, it looks cool. I've just if never you, played it. If you want to get down and we all get in there together, I'd like to do it. I mean, I do remember having some good times with the game, for sure. Get down sure. and dirty together? I'm always down. Yes. In terms of the look of the game, oh, it yeah. looks absolutely stunning. Um, on PC, you can run it at obviously uncapped frame rate. PS4 is a 30 FPS frame rate, so it's got that Destiny feel. Um, it isn't sort of Call of Duty 60 FPS, really quick action. It is a little bit more paced. The game is an absolute resource hog, though. On a 1080 on PC, you will struggle to play it at high settings, even now. Reason for that Damn. is not poor optimization. It's you, you could have a combat scenario where you've got somewhere in the region of four to 500 players, maybe 20 to 30 tanks armor, uh, somewhere in the region of maybe eight to 10 aircraft flying over on this one God, zone. It's just a lot to process for any it, machine. It, yeah. What's the gameplay loop like, Gary? Like when, when I start up a game of, of Planet Side 2, like what, what am I going to do? So when you start up, you've got some basic class archetypes. You've got things like the sniper archetype, light, infantry, heavy infantry, medic, engineer, etc. And your task is to work as part of a collective squad and force. There's three forces uh, in a constant uh, triumvirate tug of war to try to control the map. So the, the map's got uh, hexagonal quadrants corresponded to each of the, uh, the forces. And you want to push with your force to take all of the map. And once you own a majority of the map, that continent becomes locked and your faction gain resources at a higher level for you to level up and progress to higher gear. And then you move on to the next continent and you start fighting there. Because it's a three-way battle, there's never a steamroll effect. Because if one side starts to steamroll, the other two can then push it and um, you know, have an effect that, that challenges it through. It's also something where you don't have to look hard to find a, a fight. So there's a mechanic they've put in very cleverly called Deploy Now. Um, so if you don't want to strategically plan with four of your buddies like us and say, we're going to go for this outpost, you can just click deploy now. And it looks for the biggest combat hotspot and teleports you into that. And you can do that once every two minutes. So you can bring yourself back into the nearest combat hotspot every two minutes, which is great because it starts to act as an accumulator or a snowball effect. Because every player that is just looking for a fight clicks that and it keeps that combat um, vibrant and active and fueled with new people. But you'll be pushing, um, so as you say, combat loop, if I've picked, a, say, a, a light infantry man and I've spawned in at where the combat side is, I walk out of my um, teleportation base or the, the you know, the, the outpost that, that's nearest to the combat and I'll suddenly be granted with my tanks, my forward assault vehicles rolling forward ahead of me, aircraft going over me. Some guys have dropped down and they've called to pick up extra troops so you can get into a plane with some other guys that have got, you know, six other um light infantrymen that are going to parachute in you're heading forward towards a five or six hundred meter high base with you know mounted artillery cannons firing down the other team trying to assault you back and the the objective is to move into that 
and capture the facility and the outpost to force their team to fall back and break their spawns. So it's a real tug of war forward and backwards at all times because they're refu refueling as much as you are um, adding troops to yourself. So it's a real, whilst it's at an epic scale, it feels like the actions of the individual are not lost. You feel, and this is a point that I was going to get onto later, but something that's worth mentioning now is that in Destiny, which is a good comparable, I guess, because you all understand how it is, as a paracausal, you have powers of the light imbued in you. You feel very powerful as an individual. You know, you can go in there and take out a room of guys with your super and other things like that. There's none of that in Planet Side. It's very much the squad mentality. You know, you need to back your guys up. You, if you're an engineer, you need to be supporting the tanks. If you're a sniper, you really need that frontline guys in front of you to, to soak up the artillery fire so that you can yeah. make those shots. And it's a real changing dynamic that you can feel powerless, but still strong as a collective unit. So, I mean, what's your thoughts on, on that actually, Bri, from a, uh, I guess, a Destiny 2 perspective? And what I mean about that is Destiny 2 has had the rhetoric of you're going to lose your powers, you're going to be powerless, it's going to be stripped back, it's going to be fighting for your life in a world without light. We had Combined Arms this past week in Destiny, mm -hmm. which was a vehicular combat mode um, in the Crucible, where tanks and, and uh, pikes and other things are allowed. Do you think that... Destiny would benefit from a persistent combat map, like I described, something that relies upon this kind of working together with your fire team dynamic that Destiny uh, has built itself on, but in a, in a sense Ooh. where supers are less important. I think that'd be cool. You know, when you bring up combined arms, I think that kind of is more in that direction because of the just the space of the map. Supers and special abilities are just less important than weapons because just because of the distance. And uh, if we could get something where you know, like you have like a whole patrol area size map to do something like Warzone. Is it called Warzone in Halo 5? Yeah. yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, so, something yeah. like that would be. Yeah, I could see definitely something like that. And if the classes, you know, we're, we're going to have supers. We're going to have abilities in Destiny 2. I just think that this is their way of resetting those so that we'll get all new classes, all new abilities. And if they are more, if they have more specific roles than they did in Destiny 1, uh, something along the, the line of a class-based shooter, that could be a lot of fun. You know, if you yeah. have a support class in Destiny, if you have a healer class in Destiny, if you have a tank wow. class in Destiny, it would be a lot of fun. And it would change the whole dynamic of the way the game was yeah. played previously. That would be awesome. I mean, frankly, I'm I'm absolutely floored by this game. Um, as a free-to-play game, something that Sony Online Entertainment have produced as well, the developer that's not necessary or publisher that's not necessarily known How are they making money? quality. So they're making money from um, microtransactions, and mm -hmm. it's actually not a pay-to-win game, oddly enough. The weapons that you start with are, by and large, as good as the weapons that you unlock at top end. What you're paying for is the ability to redeploy armor at an accelerated rate. So if you are a tank guy and you really like your tanks, you can only deploy a tank once every certain amount of minutes or anything else there. If you were to pay for a premium subscription, that time gets reduced. So it's not so much pay to win because a tank does not guarantee success. You know, if, mm -hmm. if another opponent has got an anti-tank missile launcher, he's going to blow you up as quick as anything else there. You also pay to unlock skins. So if you like different camouflages, armors, and you pay to get XP um, accelerator boosters so that you can progress through the ranks quicker. But I can tell you now, I, I'm level 15 maybe. At level one, I was having as much success as I am at level 15. It really so comes down to... There's a microtransaction it. system, but then there's also a subscription system? Yeah, so you can pay to have a premium service, which gives you the benefits that you pay from boosters as a consistent okay. rate. It's similar to Elder Scrolls Online, which had that. They had a premium and freemium. So you could either be free and pay for boosters, or you could pay a monthly subscription and get all the DLC, all everything else, whilst you kept the subscription maintained. Okay. It's it's really stunning and something that I'm recommending is if you're a fan of first person shooters um, and you're a fan of sci-fi, you should try it, even if not to play it long term, you should try it as a demonstration or a technical demo of what is possible and what is capable in large scale warfare. Because wow. It, do you have a recommendation? Should I, should I, if I'm going to check it out, should I check it out on the PlayStation or on the PC? Probably PC. I'd, I'd say PC if you've got the capability to play it, which I know you have from the graphics card, but I reiterate it is a hog on graphics card. The reason I say PC is that 30 frames, well, from a Destiny player, you probably won't be impacted by it, but as a non-Destiny player, um, it is really jarring to play a 
first person shooter with that much going on at 30 frames a second on pc at least you can can uncap it um nice. it's you know and, and the populations as well which is my last point on it are actually not terrible it's not destiny population of course but at the same time it doesn't need to be um you, you know peak on the pc you've got five thousand players concurrent uh, off peak two thousand players on ps4 you've got uh, north, north america three thousand players peak two thousand players off peak the reason i say it doesn't need to have that many is because you're all on the same server on the same map so it, it's you know you're not trying to find a game of, of 16 players that 2000 concurrent players will be in the same combat zone with you fighting the same battle i mean i have to check this out i mean you can't yeah. go wrong for free it sounds right? awesome yeah is and there I any kind of single player cam campaign or anything to kind of get you going without just jumping into a multiplayer match i think you can run through a, a like a tutorial phase yes. in yeah it's a very very basic tutorial but if i'm completely honest with you as a someone who's played shooters before you probably won't need it you pick a class oh. you go in into it and if you click just deploy combat it will put you in the nearest hotspot or like i said i mean i've got one example of a gameplay look very very quickly before i move on um that i had um you, you can issue without using voice chat you can issue commands to the people around you there's a whole list of squads on the numpad um that squad commands and a guy in one of the jackal um lots of helicopter -y sort of gunships came and landed in front of us as we were near the spawn and just said squad get in i need a gunner so six of us jumped in myself as a sniper he obviously had some battle knowledge and battle sight of what was happening he flew ahead to the next battle that he saw that the enemy convoy was heading for and planted us not on the base itself but on a hilltop overlooking the the combat battle and then flew off to to join it so there's me two other snipers and a heavy artillery gunner with a mortar and we were just sitting up there for 30 seconds and then a line of like 14 enemy tanks just started appearing maybe 400 meters ahead of us in the tracks we were so far up they couldn't see where we were and we just started peppering them with shots from the end it took them a good 45 seconds to realize where we were from we took about maybe 10 15 guys out that sounds awesome tanks. it does sound yeah. like fun that sounds like fucking awesome man it's absolutely mind-blowing it like i said for me and and the fact is all the metacritic scores all the review scores gave it nines nine and a halves you know this game got critically acclaimed and somehow has been forgotten in the annals of history but there we go it's you know it could just be bad publicity bad um concurrence. well let me just say i'm going to download it on my ps4 pro uh and if you guys want to game with me just let me know send me a message i'm going to download it as soon as beastly thoughts is over tonight uh, so if anybody wants to join me, definitely do that. I don't you got like a whole... list of shit going on after the Beast's Thought Show. You're staying up late Jeez. tonight. Yeah. Holy <laughs> hell. Yeah. At least then, two very important things <laughs> after the show. My last um, much, much shorter thing. I actually played this game on the back of Little Nightmares, uh, BC. So I picked that game up and played it after your recommendation. Didn't grab me. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Didn't grab me. I don't mm. think it's a bad game, and I'm not going to dwell on that. I personally have more, I played it for about four hours and then I had a lot more fun watching someone play it. I think it's a great spectacle and something that has got a lot of good set pieces. But I found the, like Brian said, I, I found the puzzles very clunky. I found it was trial and error more than, um, I didn't feel like it was, it was scary the first time I got jumped by one of these guys. But when it's like the 16th time in the same room, I, all the fear factor has gone. I've kind of given up on that. At that point there, it was just irritation. And I I prefer to watch a playthrough of someone that knew was a far better gamer than me. You know, so maybe if I was watching you, Beastly, I'd have been, you know, far more entertained. But no, my, my gameplay was so poor that I put that down. However, um, I moved on to, I guess, the game that I mentioned a few podcasts ago uh, and played back through it because it reminded me so starkly of Little Nightmares. And that's something called Yomawari Night Alone, um, which you may or may not Bless have heard you. of. Bless you. you. Yeah, definitely. I've never heard that. <laughs> so this is, uh, it was released on the PlayStation Vita and on Steam for the PC. It's a 2.5D isometric horror game um, of a little girl trying to find her sister and her dog in a town that is not quite as, as it may seem. And in the same way that I mentioned that Nier Automata is like the Eastern interpretation of Horizon Zero Dawn, this is really the Eastern interpretation of Little Nightmares. So it's it's that kind of element of can we tell this story in a, a Japanese spirit sense wow. rather than being this big Hollywood Tim Burton esque kind of feel to it. Um, so it's about four and a half hours long the game, so it's not a long game, but it is absolutely terrifying. Um, cool. I played it through on the Vita, and I didn't think a two point five D isometric game could scare me. Um, I was 
I I had to stop playing and wait till the morning to finish it because I couldn't play it at night. Soiled your adult diapers. Mm -hmm. I, I left a little wet patch in the bed. No, it's it works on the basis <laughs> of um, okay. the, the the horror in it is if you guys have played Luigi's Mansion, where mm -hmm. your torchlight exposes the ghosts. Yeah. So yeah. the only way that you can see them is with this torch. Uh, and obviously your character is in 2.5D isometrics. So you've got to be constantly pirouetting and trying to find where these ghosts are coming from. And the way it works is a silent, peaceful, tranquil town, but there's your heartbeat thumping, just didum, didum, didum. And as the ghosts or the spirits start to approach you, you hear it ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, really start to pick up. Oh to my a point God. That it hits. And you're thinking, shit, there's something near me, but I don't know which way it's coming from. So I'm spinning, looking. And when it's when you actually catch it in the torchlight, you get a full screen screamer come on and just sort of <laughs> scream at you oh no um nope and then, yeah, <laughs> i'm out it's, 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 um, terrible it's very ghibli-esque so if you've seen princess mononoke the little um, forest spirits where it's kind of like um or like you know that edwin munch the scream painting where it's that that sort of yeah. um slightly off center faces with uh, those things so they're the things that are chasing you amongst other creatures um and when they do catch, you know, that heartbeat thing can be that if you've not seen them and they catch you all of a sudden, the screen just goes blank and blood splats everywhere and you get a screen. So many jump scares from that on a Vita screen, no less. But wow. yeah, I played through that and that was absolutely terrifying, but well worth it. Can you uh, just one more time say the title? It's a Yamawari. Yomawari, yeah. Um, I, we can obviously link it in the description here. Yeah, or the do chat. that because I'll, I'll um, probably grab that. It it's, sounds fun for the Vita or Steam, very cheap on Steam, and worth mentioning as well, it was such a critical success at the end of 2016 that a sequel is coming out um, end of this year. It's going to be Vita, Steam, and this time PS4. Uh, and there's rumours that it will have a remaster of the original game on it as well. Oh, wow. So, absolutely fantastic. Play it with the lights. If you're going to play it on the Vita, and I think it works really well on the Vita as a horror game that's very personal to you, I'd recommend playing it with the lights off on the Vita and headphones in. Oh, yeah. I would recommend just oh, the yeah. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> outside in the sunlight possibly in a public area or your mall yeah, so you can, <laughs> or so park <laughs> mcdonald's play palace the sound bro. completely off <laughs> it's i, bro, I can you, tell you see, come on how much i enjoy who's that front? dude screaming in the corner of that mcdonald's <laughs> that's prior <laughs> so scared look at this beta it's man i didn't think he could i didn't think he could hit that tie note <laughs> <laughs> I, I just i was terrified and what i really liked is that it told the story completely and in a satisfactory way in four hours it didn't have to drag out to like you know a 25 30 hour open world game so well, yeah, that's i me. can't wait to try that thank you for uh i guess digging back into the archives uh bringing some gems from the back of the room to the forefront and a lot of people who have never even heard of these games thank you so much for shining a well-deserved light on some of these titles uh, real quickly, I want to talk to you guys about what I've been playing. Normally, I go through doing YouTube. I go through tons of games, usually the newest stuff, because I want to stay up to date and, and play relevant games. This week, I found that video game news is kind of lacking, and it hit me. I was sitting in my, my studio, this place here, and I said, there's not really a lot of news, but I still need to play some video games to get some footage for news. And then that's the moment where it hit me. I looked over at my wife, and I said, this has become a job. Playing video games has become a job. It has it, it's lost what you, it used to mean to me. And I had to take a deep breath, and I stopped everything I was doing. I told you guys during the pre-show I didn't do any videos. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, two weeks ago I talked about doing a video every day. I stopped mm -hmm. making videos, and I went back into my library, and, and my wife and I, we played um, this trilogy. We've been playing Overwatch for the last two days. Resident Evil 4. We played some Resident Evil 5. I've been playing my Nintendo 3DS. I played my PlayStation 2. I played some Shadow of the Colossus. Of course, I played some The Last of Us. I wanted to play video games again to have fun. Uh, I, I did something I haven't done in a long time. I went to the uh, PlayStation and Xbox stores to see what demos were available for games I hadn't played. I played the Nier Automata demo, and this is my first experience with it. And Gary, you are right. The, the demo lasts for a good 30 minutes. Totally incredible. Cannot believe how amazing that game is. It's a definite must-have game on my list. I played that game. I played Dragon Quest Heroes 2, which is something that it was just there. And I was like, well, why not try it? I played it, completely fell in love with the game. It's a must-have game. But something I haven't done in a long time was played video games 
to enjoy the experience. Every now and then, you guys know, I'll stop making videos and I'll dig deep into The Last of Us Online multiplayer because that's really my outlet. I play that game, I'm good at that game, and I like to just shoot the shit with my friends playing that game. But these last few days have been very special to me. They've been very meaningful to me. I've been playing games with my kids. I played Tekken Tag Tournament 2 with my sons, uh, having fun. You know, brought up my PlayStation 2, played some Shadow of the Colossus, having a good time with my wife, you know, just playing Overwatch, just having fun, not recording any video. And that's been my week. And it's it's kind of opened my eyes up to what I need to be doing as far as going forward with my channel. And, and I haven't made any real, uh, you know, I haven't come out in the open and said exactly what I'm going to be doing in the future, but mm -hmm. it's going to be exciting. But I'm going to find a way to continue to do what I love to do and not let it turn into something that I don't love as much. I love talking about video games. It's a I weird place to be, Beasley. It's so weird. many times, you know, you take a hobby you love and you say, I want to make a profession out of this. That way, every day, I get to do what I love. But what you're inadvertently doing is adding all the stresses of making a living and, yeah. you know, working. Work. You know, you're adding that and you're inputting it into doing something you love. And it can be really dangerous because it can spoil that thing you loved. Yeah. And that was the, the, the revelation for me, Briar. I was looking at, the, you know, all these toys I have. I have a grown man. This is a man's dream. This room right here is what I've always visualized my entire life. It has all the shit that a 15-year-old will go crazy over. But here I am, almost 40, still mm -hmm. going crazy. And I'm not enjoying it the way that I've always wanted to. I look around and I'm like, okay, this is this is my stuff. It's great. But let's get to work. Let's look up some news. Let's find out what's going on. Let's make a video. What's the newest video that people would like to see? What's the newest game? Let me get some footage of that. Rather than have fun. And so I'm going to find, I'm, I'm, I'm actively getting back into having fun with games and making it relevant to me because I don't want to lose myself behind YouTube. I don't want to lose myself behind appeasing people who want to see the absolute newest thing. And, you know, my wife was really happy that I, I kind of had this revelation. She looked at me and smiled. We hung out. And, and we played video games the way we did before I ever started YouTube. We just had fun. And that's been my week. And I know Robbie, he had, he had a moment, I think two weeks ago, where he said yeah. just, video games hadn't been grabbing him the way that uh, they used to. And I felt just that, be going through a slow time. Yeah, we're... I felt, that, I felt that moment, you know, over the last week that it's like I haven't been playing what I've been wanting to play. I haven't been trying new things. I've been playing keep up. I want to have the newest. I want to play games that are relevant. You know, and I did try Mass Effect. I really tried it this week. Don't like that game. So weird. Uh, and mm. I, I, I didn't. I didn't give it really any time like Robbie or Gary did. But just playing it, looking at the characters, I was very disappointed. I played about four hours on Wednesday, and I was like, No, I'm not going to do this. But I've been having fun playing video games. I think that's the important thing to not lose yourself behind a profession or creating a profession out of streaming or uploading videos. And that's been my week. I just played a plethora of games. I actually had fun. And it's been a long time since I played video games to have fun. And that's one thing, Brian, I can say that you've not lost because you play the game, the games that you absolutely love and not what people want to see. And so I got to, I'm trying to get back to that. And it's a real special I, thing. I see a lot of language that gets me concerned. I've had this happen to me beastly. I've had it happen. Uh, when I was when I was a kid, my favorite hobby was mountain biking. So of course I said, you know, let's. I, I want to work in a bike shop. I went and worked in a bike shop. All of a sudden, that became a job. It was the first experience yeah. I had in my life where I was like, holy shit, working on a hobby doesn't necessarily make work awesome. It can just fuck up the hobby. The hobby, yeah. It the hobby is no longer. <laughs> it doesn't. It you know it could go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it happened with golf for me. It happened with. Uh, I'm trying to think. I know there's been other poker. It happened with poker for me. Um, I, I don't. People probably don't know this. I spent a year playing poker. That was my job. That's all I did. I just played poker every day. Oh wow! wow. Um, How'd you do? I did well, except that I hated fucking poker by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is, oh, man. No. Yeah. Um, so I had that knowledge going into YouTube, and as YouTube became my job because it started off as just you know i wanted to talk Hobby. about call of duty mm -hmm. right um mm -hmm. as it became more my job i've always had that in my back of my mind and that's why you'll often see on youtube there might be a week or two weeks where you see very little stuff from me and that's because if i don't have something i want to talk about i'm not going to poop it out i'm not going to force it out because a 
it's just it sucks to do it. And B, it sucks to watch. You can tell when that's happening. So it's like, you know, I've had that happen, and I, I could definitely feel, feel where you're coming from, B. It's never happened to me before. I mean, I, yeah, I'm the kind of guy that's usually gung-ho about every decision I make. Yeah. But I've been doing this since late 2013. And it's always been, you know, this high impact. i got to keep putting it out. You know, I mean, I talked to you guys. I did 12 videos this morning. You guys yeah. always say, holy shit. You're, yeah. you're, you know? you're crazy. Yeah, it was like yeah. going nuts. You can and, see and, it all happen to a lot of YouTubers and a lot of Twitch streamers, too. You see it happen. You can tell it's happening by the language they use. You know, they say, <laughs> you know, back to the grind. Back to, back to, you know, like grinding out these videos or back to, you know, they use like that it, negative it, it like language. That, yeah. Burn out on their hobby. Like, yeah, that's exactly it, Robbie. They're burning out on their hobby, and it happens. You know, it happened for me with Destiny during, like, the summer. Last summer with the Taken King, it had been so long since we had anything new to play, mm. and I wasn't enjoying the meta of PvP that much. I just started to, like, okay, I'm just bored with Destiny right now, so I'm just going to kind of stop playing it, you know? And then well, we got I Rise of Iron, and I don't know, for some reason it hasn't been happening, though. I, I would expect it'll happen to me again this summer when, you know, we, I've had a taste of Destiny 2. And, Desti and then you're going to go Destiny, back to Destiny 1. Yeah. You know, it's like getting heroin, too. Heroin just isn't doing it for you. Heroin you two. really want that sequel. heroin, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, once you've had Electric Bigaloo, Boogaloo, <laughs> breaking just doesn't do it for you anymore. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question, Brad, because it sounds like you've been golf. I didn't know about poker until today. Going forward, do you have any uh, suggestions or? What I take you breaks in. Position? I take breaks. That's what I do. Yeah, you yeah, gotta I take mean, breaks. Honestly, I, I I never have. I've always been busy with this and taking a break and just enjoying video games and not worrying about it. I actually said something to my wife last night. She said, "You didn't do any videos today." I said, "Right now, I'm not concerned about YouTube. I just want to have some fun." And she just yeah. looked at me like, "What? I can't believe my husband's back." It's a new What's man. Good? Yeah. And, and, and it's a very special thing to kind of take that moment to realize what I've been doing. And I've been doing this as a job, not necessarily what I love. I love, I've always been a beastly gamer. Before I bought a camera or a, a computer or a capture card, I love playing video games and, and having fun with them. And yeah. when you do this for so long, you have so many people who are looking for your next bit of content so they can comment and they, they can say something about it. You said, why haven't you talked about this? It becomes a priority over having fun. And you got to find a way to marry that without overdoing one versus the other. Totally. You need a balance, I think, is the most important thing. You have to balance that. And you know your, I think you know yourself the best, too. Like You do have to take breaks and you have to say, okay, I need to prioritize on different things, right? I think that's just people change over time. Things Twitch, happen. And, I'll tell you what, Twitch helps with this tremendously, too. Because when I'm on Twitch, a lot of the time, I'm not really focused on the game I'm playing at all. I'm actually just focused on chat. Like, I'm, I, I'm playing PvP, and I'm, like, I'm half, like, I spawn in, I look at the screen, and I, you know, kill somebody or get killed. I, you know, and I die, and then I look back at chat, mm -hmm. and I start talking to chat, and it's like, Half the time I miss the actual spawn in, you know, like I'm just standing there and somebody it's runs like up you're to driving me with a, a car. Somebody yeah. runs up to me with a shotgun. It's like, it's it's really bizarre. I I play Destiny the most when I'm on stream now, so that's where a lot of the video that I get from my YouTube channel comes from because I have two computers, one's recording and one's streaming. So like, just the 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 actual chat becomes the interaction it's not necessarily the the game itself it's very bizarre it's i haven't come to terms with it <laughs> yeah. i mean i've I, I watched you do it briar and and i liken it to this you know sometimes you're driving in and it's such a engaging conversation you find yourself seeing the situation you might be talking about and the next thing you know you blink and you're at your destination so I, I could only imagine that Twitch is like that for you. That you're having these conversations, you're looking over, you're talking to people, you're playing the game, two different worlds are colliding, and then all of a sudden you find out, okay, here's the end of the match. I did this well, wow. And we were talking about something completely out in left field. And that's Every really once in a while, like if I play in trials, I'll focus more on the gameplay. <laughs> and you could tell because my chat interaction is much lower because – you know, I actually, I am trying to succeed at the game when I play Trials. You wouldn't know it by watching the gameplay, but trust me, <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, and then, like, every once in a while, I'll spawn into, like, a Destiny match, and I'll get, like, three kills really quick, and I'll be thinking to myself, you know what? 
if I pay attention for this entire match, I might be able to get a YouTube video out of it. So let's see if I can get it done here. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of my Destiny gameplay or my Destiny time, I'm actually not even really paying attention to the game. I'm actually paying attention to the, t- to the Twitch chat. window, which is really weird. Well, I mean, that's why you're such a a great streamer, bro. You're, oh you're, yeah, fantastic. Like said, Best I, streamer. I'm not fucking Best around, streamer. man. You're, you're a great streamer. You know, <laughs> you have a great personality, and, and like someone in in your stream said, it that does that's a great allegory to what really happens. It's like you're this funny bartender that has a quick quirk for everything that's going on at the bar. And you serve the best drinks. I mean, it's, it's oh, you serve amazing drinks. That's that's what we drunk. gotta work out. We need to start, figure out a way where I can actually like pull a tab and the beer comes out of your computer when you're watching the Bright Rabbit. Channel. Oh my god! You gotta destroy so many there, computers, Brian. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking next level. I'm patenting that. Oh my Apple, god! Call I, me. I want to have a beer tab so I can just <laughs> hooked up to my computer. Yeah, uh-huh. tilt that glass, get the right amount of foam. You know. Oh man, be so good. Oh god, he knows some more, so much more about beer now. I remember when. He- here. All right, so to cap off that point, uh, BC, before we move on around enjoying what you do um, and being successful in it, um, I think it's worth mentioning Alan Watts at this time here. is He's actually a British philosopher from the, from the 50s. Um, really smart guy, really, really quality. Uh, and there's a famous video of his that's available on YouTube, but I'll paraphrase it there. Um, he was a lecturer at Cambridge University and students would come up to him all the time and say to them, um, you know, Mr. Mr. Watts or Professor Watts, what can I do when I graduate university? Um, and he'd say, well, what do you want to do? And they'd say, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll be a, a lawyer. Um, maybe I'll be a you know, banker, something of that nature. Uh, but I really don't know. I need your help. And he'd say to them, what would you do if money didn't matter? And he said, then suddenly they'd change completely and they'd give him a long 10 minute mm-hmm. story. I think yeah. I want to work with animals. I want to work with, I want to be a, go out and travel the world and I want to do this. And he'd say, well, do that then. To do do whatever's going to be happy because when you do that at some point you'll become a master in it and you'll be passionate and happy and someone will enjoy that see that and reward you for it so you know you're you're really preaching from the um from the, the hymn book of, of alan watts in that perspective there if you do what makes you happy and what you can see a genuine passion and enthusiasm in people will gravitate to it naturally so you know i think do what you're doing and success will come thank and you oh my conversation God. Well, probably five years ago with one of my best friends uh, in that exact quote. I think it, he, he had phrased it. If, if you could do any job, if, if every job in the world paid $50,000, which job would you pick? Yeah. And I picked YouTuber. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, <laughs> so, there you go. And then the next question was, how do you get that done? How do you get, do that? And he's, so oh, that's when I started my YouTube channel. Wow. Life-changing moment, Briar. It was. It was a you, big conversation. You lured me in. You were, I, I was believe it. super fucking drunk, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that's why it worked. A, yeah, a lot of people don't know this, right? Back when I first met Briar, he may have had uh, maybe 2,000 subscribers. Yeah. Very small. Uh, yeah. Back in 2013, I remember those days, and, man. And I, oh, I, yeah. I was I was one of his subscribers. I used to love watching his Black Ops Two stuff, and I started Beastly Thoughts. And after the very first episode, which completely was botched, Briar sent me a message and asked me, "Could he be on the second episode?" That's right. And and I tried to hold my composure because like this guy's a fucking celebrity. He has 2,000 subscribers. Oh my god, 2,000! Yeah, so- I can't believe Wait, it. Yeah. When you have so few subscribers, what I actually used to do is when I was reading the comments, I used to just click on people, like and see if they had a YouTube channel. And you were one of the people I clicked on, so I started watching your videos. Just as, you know, like, I was just curious, right? Yeah, and I, I saw Beastly thing, Thoughts. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I like this guy. I wonder if I could, you know, like, if we could get something going. And yeah. 153 and, and episodes out. later, turns out I made a huge mistake. Brian, <laughs> 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 you, you called it 153 again. You got the number wrong. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Shit. Well, everybody, before we get to this, be sure to tune in next week for episode 153. <laughs> Maybe we should start that's... counting down. Yeah, or one fifty three part four. Well, just right. part five and then part six. Everybody's everybody's doing podcasts all fucking wrong. Everybody's counting up. We're gonna switch <laughs> up the down. game. We're switching up the podcast game. We're counting down. What <laughs> happens when we hit zero? That's what I'm. That's my question. What, what happens? happens? Tune in. Tune in to see. <laughs> <laughs> be a special all I'm saying is that these clothes don't have to stay on. <laughs> They're not glued on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, very easily. Whether intentional or not. 
we have got to get through this. What's what you've been playing? Because it's we've been doing this for an hour. We haven't even touched the fucking <laughs> it's been an hour. It's Such a good conversation, though. It's been Deep. so good. It's deep. All right, so I, I want to one more point to that. Is it, I love this deep. When you are right. experiencing burnout, it is important to have different outlets, right? It's like have more than just one hobby. You know, like it's yeah. important to broaden yourself mentally and physically. It's, mm-hmm. Go out there, you know. If you got a friend who likes maybe shooting guns at targets, go try that. You know, if you got at a friend target, who likes... you get arrested if you do that at Target. No, yeah. no, 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 at Targets, <laughs> not at the store. <laughs> you know, if you got a friend, you know, like go try some different stuff because just focusing on one thing all the time, you know, you just you're just you're narrowing your mind unnecessarily. That and, and, is and, and, such good advice, Briar, because especially in high school when I was a teenager, like gaming was just it was all I would do. And mm-hmm. I got to be honest, that was a lot of what led me to being very depressed is just doing the same thing all the time. Like I loved it, but eventually I did get so burned out on it. It was tough to really, you know, have like clear thoughts. And now I just find myself wanting to do so much more stuff and I just go out more and I just do more stuff. So that's, that's so true. You got to At one point in my up. life, I was golfing every day. every day. I would get out of work and go golfing. Yeah. That's same. all I did. And it got to the point where, I was being so competitive with myself that I wasn't enjoying it anymore because I just wanted to be getting better and lowering my handicap. That became all it was competing, competing, competing. That's what it, the focus was. And finally I just like, I broke, like I, I'd had enough. I didn't want to, I wasn't enjoying myself anymore. So I stopped golfing yeah. almost all entirely. Now when I do go golfing, I'm having a blast because the pressure's off. Like I don't expect myself to go out there and shoot three under par I expect myself to go out there and get drunk and be an idiot with my friends. And have fun, and that's yeah. way yeah. more fun. <laughs> oh, no doubt. It's it's funny you brought that up, right? For the last week or so, that's really backyard tetherball. But now we got a pool. We got an official size volleyball set. You know, mm-hmm. with a beach ball, volleyball. We got uh, badminton. And, I mean, yeah, badminton. And we've been having a lot of fun in the backyard. Yeah, like the, dark... the beastly Olympiad back there. I told my wife. I said we can like have. <laughs> Five families back here playing different games, and I got a, a Budweiser dartboard on my shed. So I mean, there's so much for us to do out there, and we've been doing that for the last week. We actually started that last week, and it's it's been making things a lot better. I love gaming. You know, BC, I had an idea way back when to do like a man I Olympics. Was, yeah, I, I, a man it was your Olympics family versus mine. Remember? That's Where, how I was going to start. Well, what we would do is we'd have like five different events. You know, like maybe you go out. Well, like we get to do them all in your backyard. You have like. You know, tetherball, then you have like a relay volleyball. race in the pool or volleyball or darts. Man, like we're just talking. Man Olympics. Yeah, yeah you just do a bunch of dumb man shit, and whoever wins the most events wins, I don't know, a trophy, like a dumbass trophy till the next year. Yeah. Man Olympics would be things like opening jam jars and like. <laughs> if, you, if you have to do it with your underarm, Gary. Like, Somewhere, <laughs> somehow, that's an Olympic. Taking the trash out, cleaning the gutters, just general man shit. <laughs> what we were gonna do is we were gonna do uh, like a golf, like lowest score wins. Then we we're gonna do bowling. Then we we're gonna do darts. And then we we're gonna do uh, what's the uh, the the ping pong yeah, game with the beer? Oh, beer, beer pong. pong. Beer, beer pong. pong. Like we we're gonna have like four events in one day. I'm down, bro. Because you it, know, when we meet face to face. That video is gonna be all fucked yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our wives probably won't want us anymore. I want to get in on that too, but it would be a long trip. <laughs> well, once the royalties come in, once we start counting down, I'm convinced Beastly Thoughts is going to be a gold mine. I'm yeah. telling you, this counting down thing never been done. Oh, Unprecedented. Hey, that's true. This is a first. <laughs> Whether it succeeds or not, it's a first. We got this countdown thing on lock. So, I mean, are we going to keep it at 153? Do you want like. Well, no, we'll start going backwards. <laughs> Next week will be 152. It's got to have like kind of like a, a arc, right? So we've been going up, 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 up. Now we're gonna be we're gonna kind of hover at 153 for a few episodes. Then we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna right. start going okay. down to 152, 151. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will be so, so confused. Like so what? Now, now I see, Brad. This is already pre-planned because you've already been hovering at 153 for the last couple of weeks. So he he pre-planned this shit. Oh, he, he was prepared for this. Like he I got like, this brilliant plan, guys. We're gonna go down. He didn't in tell us about not- it. It, it, he didn't tell us. He already knew. So he, just, he knew this weeks ago, but he just finally broke it to us. Great news. Do you know what else we've been waiting for? We've been waiting 60 minutes now to hear what Robbie's been playing. You do Robbie, matter, Robbie. If you tell me this week that you've not really been gaming, I'm just going to get up and walk off right now. Because <laughs> 60 minutes to hear that. Ridiculous. 
<laughs> what have you been playing, have, Robbie? I have been gaming. Don't worry about it. I mean, we've been having a blast, so it's all good. Um, it's been great. This week, I've mainly just found myself been playing uh, old school Call of Duty. Call of Duty 4 is what I've really been enjoying because I feel like I just want to get back into shooters. You know what I mean? Like, I like having a good skill at them. God, are you playing the remaster? That... Or are you playing Call of 4? Yes, remastered. Okay. okay. I'm just curious. Go ahead. Yeah, no, been having a blast with it. I mean, the only thing that bugs me about it, I'll admit, I feel so bad for doing this. I spent like seventy dollars in microtransactions in that game. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like twice the price of the game, <laughs> but oh, so worth it. You know, get those cool skins and get those sexy guns. Yeah, I think I mean, the game's about, a blast. It really that is. The game is about to go on sale as a standalone soon from here. Apparently, so. yes. Oh, yeah. good. Finally. There's um, a rumor about that. So, you, what, what are they selling? I haven't been following that game. I know that the COD community is kind of pissed off because they added a bunch of supply microtransactions. And, yeah, they, them. they added weapons into those supply drops, though, right? Yeah, and I think the issue is is just that everything they add is like you've got to get it through a supply drop. You know what I mean? Like you got to spend money, and you have no idea when you're going to get it. So it's mm -hmm. just random. Like you're just throwing money at this thing, hoping you get it. And I think that's where people are really mad with it, right? You because can earn the already... supply drops in-game. Is it just too slow to not spend money at it? Well, that, and it's just, yeah, it is it is kind of slow, and it's just addicting because you can just buy so many, and it's like, uh, yeah, it just... It's, is there a competitive like advantage gambling. to anything in them? Well, yeah, you can get new weapons, so... I are, mean, the, there's are the new weapons better rifle. than the old weapons? Yeah, there's this assault rifle in the game called the Exemplar. It is ridiculous. It's... So there is almost certainly it's, better. It's gone pay to win then. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Brian looked so depressed when he made that statement. Wow. It's gone pay to win. A little bit. <laughs> so is that all you've been playing, Robbie? Just uh, old school? Yeah, college? just wanting to get my really skill and get back into shooters and, you know, get ready for Call of Duty World War II and Destiny 2 and Battlefront 2 and, you know, just kind of get back into it. I want to keep my skill up. So the two the two first person shooters I'm really amped for right now would be Destiny 2, of course. And I'm really happy about that because I haven't kept up with the Joneses in Destiny at all. And so getting Destiny 2 gives me a chance to start at an even ground mm -hmm. with people like Briar and the elites in the Destiny community. And maybe then I can keep up and, oh, yeah. and continue on. And also Call of Duty World War II. Uh, for some reason, that has gotten me amped and excited. I'm really uh, looking forward to Farpoint, which is coming out this month. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Are, you, are, are you buying the gun? Oh yeah, I'm not. Why would I buy that if I'm not buying the gun? I'm buying the gun. Buying yeah, the gun? I'm what am I? What am I? Not, you're you're the rabbit. You're right. you're I the literally rabbit. just <laughs> cancelled my pre-order on that this week. You I'm did? Right. Why? What? Hold on, you bought twelve PlayStation Vitas, but you cancelled. <laughs> you ran out of fucking you money because he's buying too many Vitas. <laughs> he's bought so many Vitas, and he's bought like three has, versions of Destiny Two. He has <laughs> four of the five best Vitas ever made in his house right now. All right, Gary, uh, tell me, why did you why did you cancel your pre-order for Five Point? Because the last time I put the PlayStation VR on was that Fated game, the Viking game that gave me motion sickness. I went back to it, gave me motion sickness again. I went back and tried VR Worlds, gave me motion sickness. Ooh, um, I've outrageous. never had that on the PlayStation VR. Oculus, fine, still use it, still enjoy it, still play a lot of Oculus. I unplugged the PlayStation VR that week, um, and it's now in a cupboard. And I'm not selling it. I'm going to keep it in the event that, that Farpoint is like this must-have game. Mm -hmm. But I'm certainly not going to be continuing to support it until I'm at a position where I want to play it. I've gone back and played a bit more Trickster VR, which is, you know, full uh, locomotion and, you know, mm -hmm. action and 360. No problems. PlayStation VR now, the, the games that I've sampled and tried that haven't made me motion sick are making me motion sick. And I don't know if it's a Really? Thing. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting, Gary called yeah. the g virus i don't think yeah. i've put mine on since i played resident evil mm. damn it briar neither have i i'm looking at it right now it looks so lonely right next to the playstation move controllers my kids are saying that to me now they're saying dad you haven't played playstation vr in a long you spent a lot of money on it and i say shut the fuck up shut the fuck up you haven't cleaned that bathroom in a long fucking time what's up with that <laughs> you guys, uh... Those parenting skills. <laughs> that grass is looking yeah. kind of long. When's the last yeah. time you mowed? Don't mow that grass. What the <laughs> hell is going on so, here? Side Tossing note. stones from glass houses over there. That's what so, I'm saying. Side note, bro. You just brought this up, so i got to say it. My son, Brandon, he's been playing, uh, uh, what is it, um, Borderlands. He got like the special edition and all that, Borderlands 2. And he's been playing with his friends quite a bit. He had to cut the grass yesterday. 
I looked outside and so I saw my, I, actually, I saw him here. just he was kind of zigzagging through the yard. Oh, he's like, like artistic, this, artistic type. Yeah, he was <laughs> Picasso. And so anyway, he's out there trying to <laughs> cut the grass. When he gets done, it's getting dark. So he puts my lawnmower in the shed and he goes back in his room to play the game. And Kate comes in here this morning and says, the yard looks like shit. And I go out there and look. <laughs> and you better believe Brendan had his ass back out there today doing it right. Yeah. God what you got to do, Beastly, here's yeah, the tip. Yeah, there you go. You got to get those night vision goggles so they can go out there at night. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the night. Look, that's the hot tip, man. I, I was going to go floodlights, but then I was thinking, do I really want to spend that much on electricity? Oh, but I'm I sure just, the neighbors are fine with this, too. I, I could just pop a couple of double A's in those COD, those Call of Duty night vision goggles I got years ago, and we are fucking on fire, man. And they can, they can avoid the sunlight and all that heat. You got a good point there, Briar. It's a win-win for me. I think... With my Latin American or my South American blood in me, I think I've got the gardening card sort of covered on this podcast, really. You guys can't touch my garden. You know, you probably, you probably <laughs> you got my gardening skills. You know us Rough. South Americans, we can do our gardening. Don't worry. That's why. <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to touch that with a 10 foot pole, Gary. You got it. That's I will say, too, um, quick thing when I mow the lawn, like, I am like, I want to have like nice straight rows all yeah. following each other, like, really nice and looking. And like, I take my time with it. I do. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's where my son fucked up. It looked like he wrote in cursive with the lawnmower. Yeah. Okay. No, what you want to do is just kind of go kick diagonally. His ass like, get it right. You want to go diagonally across the lawn, and then the next week you go diagonally the other way, and that's how you get that nice checkerboard kit pattern. Looks well, damn, oh, Brian. Wow. Well, there you yeah. go. Okay, so look, this is what we got to do. The show has been going a little long. We've been having more fun today than I can in recent history. We have a plethora of news. We got We've got quite a truly been going off the rails. Robbie's going to Robbie, Robbie's going to run the gamut of the news quickie style. Robbie, I know you've never had one of those, but that means you're going to go real fast. Oh, you trust me, I love quickies. I'm good. He, okay, okay, good. So let's get started with these quickies. <laughs> in the end, pull them right out. Basically, All right, boys, you ready for your first quickie? All right, let's yeah. go. Phil Spencer this week has suggested there will be future entries in the Fable series, even with the closing of longtime development studio at Lionhead, stating, quote, nothing to announce right now, but I do think the IP has a lot of places it could go. <laughs> Quote. I don't know that man. This this is this has been a misquoted story. Now this is quite interesting. Is I feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad for Phil Spencer. No, you're not misquoted. The, the story how it's been covered has been. Mm. So Ooh, you know, feels feels like Mr. Nice Guy. Like you couldn't mm. think of. Oh, any, he's any such a nice, nice guy. Really, guy yeah. there. So in a direct press conference, he got hit with the uh, question. So what's happening with Fable? Is there going to be any more Fable games, Phil? How do you answer that? You know, he's got to say. Maybe if you say <laughs> yeah. right, that's instantly there. If you say yes, you've just announced the next Fable game. Oh, yeah. totally. So, yeah, no you're right. He has to basically. He can't say no or yes because he'll get yeah. in trouble either way. Yeah. You hit him with the story. What are you doing with Fable? Can you tell us if this franchise is going to have any more games? He has to give that answer, and now that's news anyway. You know, it's like nothing to announce, but it could go one way, it could go the other. We're, we're exploring different. It still means he's obviously looking to get it back and going. I'm sure. No, it doesn't. This, yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> doesn't. No. The only thing they can do with Fable right now that would really get me excited is to remaster and read, not remaster, redo Fable 1 from the ground up with all the promises they promised with the original Fable. That would be exciting to me. You know what would be more exciting to me? Uh, I'm, a I new think game. I'm get, okay. You know what? Like uh, Fable, <laughs> Fable 4. If you, like, what is Fable if you don't have the original developers, original guys who like created that concept, created those games? Like, What's the point of re reviving that franchise? Is there is there some deep-seated lore? Is there a story that I need to know about from the Fable no. franchise? Like, what is it, it, Do I even know the names of the characters even though I've played no. 80 hours of Fable in my life? Do I care? I, no. I can't remember either, bro. Yeah, the cool thing right. about Fable was the ideas and the cool stuff that the developers, and I can't remember his name. Who's the lead guy? Peter Molyneux. Peter Molyneux used to... Like, that's mm. what Fable was. It's Peter Molyneux's baby, right? Yeah. If he's not there, what the fuck do I care about Fable for? It's the, the, right. British, the British voice acting as well. And the, the, the sort of they, that happened with Xenoblade Chronicles as well, where you very unique British voice acting game and that kind of sense of humor from a British studio as well. If you lose that and it gets taken over by the studio, I agree, Briar. It's, it's a different simple game. answer. They just need you, Gary. That's all There's nothing need. about the Fable franchise <laughs> that without Lionhead or Peter Molyneux that I need. I need to pay attention to. No more fable in our lives. Robbie, what's next? That was a long quickie. I like him. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't expect any more, though. Holy <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Anyways, 
in time for the Switch's launch, Nintendo decided to ship the consoles or some units via air, even with the higher cost being associated because they wanted to meet the demand, which ended up being much higher than they had expected. Ship them by air. Yeah, so they yeah. basically when they ship consoles from Japan to uh, the U.S. Clearly, by sea. they do it by boat, right? They have those huge shipping containers. They fill up those shipping containers. <clears throat> they put them on a boat, and it takes I don't know weeks to get it's here. It's just way cheaper, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's way cheaper, but it takes a lot longer. But there's so much demand for the Switch. Nintendo wanted to fill that demand before everybody figured out there's only one game available. So, <laughs> 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 so they put them on an airplane, got them here. <laughs> yeah. Even with that, though, it's still sold out. Like, I actually just went and looked before the show today, like a couple hours ago. It's still sold out, at least here in, at uh, GameStop and Best Buy. I couldn't find one. Well, didn't we have so. a news story that they were actually increasing production on them a couple weeks ago? Yeah. So that'll take some wa a while to get going, right? That can right. Get... Yeah, it's right. amazing, though, it's, how it's high got... demand. It has got a lot more games now, though. I know we joke, but if you look at, you know, wrapping in the indies to it, Puyo Puyo Tetris... Um, things of that Mario nature Kart. That have come out. Mario Kart. There's, there's probably, I'd say now, five or six quality titles, and then maybe 15 to 20 expanded library games. So yeah, it's in a better state than it was at launch. All right. Agreed. Rally, what's next? For sure. Nintendo has revealed new details about Breath of the Wild's first DLC pack, known as the Master Trials. Available only as part of the Season Pass for 20 US dollars, the expansion will include the Trials of the Sword, which has 45 different dungeons and rooms, a new Hard Mode, a Hero's Path Mode, a Travel Medallion, and a Korok Mask, and 8 pieces of new gear. No release date has been given besides a summer 2017 release. That sounds like a hell of a DLC for 20 part of the season pass. That's I've heard this go both ways. Yeah. You know, some people are really excited for it. Some people are like, that's it. That's all we're getting. It's well, weird, too, because you have these trials, which sound really cool. And then you have the hard, obviously, just your difficulty. And the hero's path is literally it tracks where your character's been. Like, it's it's strange. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if it's if, if it's part of the season pass, does that mean that this is all that encompasses the season pass? Or no, there's another there be, expansion. There's going to be there's another, two okay, expansions. So, this is the first. So one. it's wow. Well, actually, you pay the twenty dollars, you get this and something else. That's pretty. To me, that's a, a great value. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things in there that that are strict content, and Nintendo have been quite transparent with that in saying that there are a few items that they've had to roll into the season pass that they wanted to get out of release and it was the option of delay the game or get mm -hmm. it out at release and cut them so the hero's path mode is actually a developer tool that wasn't in there to track where the testers have been and where people have gone and they've just reworked that now as part of the uh as part yes, of the it's, it's weird like i don't know it's it's cheap you can't get too mad at it because it's yeah. not very much money for both of them like it's a decent it's deal but like i don't know it's strange content to it's, me it's ten dollars you know is that's the way to look yeah. at it I, you know, I'm a little disappointed there's no story. You know, like, I'd love to see, like, a an addition to the story or a side shoot for the story, you know. We'll get that later a, this year. A DLC story, something like we got with The Witcher 3, you know, like. Yeah. Something mm, like that would be super exciting. Hard mode, of... like, hard mode's cool, but a new fucking, like, content patch would be cool, too. Well, there's yeah. a, cu a couple of question marks mm. that we've left open here on. One on this one and one on the second part. So, the second part of the season pass uh Briar, as you say adds at least one new dungeon and does add new story to the the franchise so whether it's a divine beast or whether it's an underground dungeon we don't know or hyrule castles technically a dungeon as well so it could be that size the other point that's left unopened here is the hero's path mode and hard mode so hero's path we know is like a cave of trials so it's 45 rooms where you don't have gear to enter it and you it's sort of like survival mode through 45 rooms of horror that mode. sounds good which is kind of cool, but we don't know how hard that's going to be. And then secondly, with hard mode, we don't know if that's retroactive or if it needs you to start a new game. Because if it starts a new game, I don't know how many people are going to be down for playing Zelda again from the start just to have hard mode. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I'll be honest with you, people who really love that game, mm -hmm. a hard mode is appealing. For me, I don't know that I will, but mm -hmm. I, I can see a lot of people doing it. You know, come back to that game. It's been a few months. Come back to that game. Play another playthrough on hard mode. You can see that. Oh, maybe people playthrough. love that game. Yeah. For me, right, I Robbie. think I don't think I'll be picking that game back up until the next DLC comes out. 
Okay. Yeah, because we know that's going to be an actual story expansion too the, uh, this fall. So I think that'll be more substantial. And that'll, again, be part of the season pass for $20. I think that the season pass that Nintendo has kind of planned out here for The Legend of Zelda is pretty incredible for only 20 bucks. We call it incredible. You get story DLC later as well as all this we, stuff now. I mean, we haven't seen that story DLC. I, I think it's it's a little a little crazy to call it. Yeah, that and who knows how long it is. Witcher like, 3 knows- DLC, incredible, because I've played it, and I know what it is, and it was incredible. Theoretical DLC that we haven't played yet, not going to call yeah. that incredible. Yeah, but the, the, <laughs> Witcher 3, the Witcher 3 season pass is what? $40? Uh, I don't remember, because yeah, I, I, I bought the Game of the Year so. edition. I mean, you're paying a little bit more money. We'll see, but I think that $20 for a season pass, especially for a game that's as top tier as Legend of Zelda, and you're getting more than one DLC, I think it's it's worth it. I think it's good. Yeah. To, I'll least. reserve judgment until I actually play it before God I say damn it's it, worth Brian, it or not. You, say you love it now. <laughs> I, no, yeah. I do not like Brian, when people say it, it's gonna... worth it and you haven't even played it yet. It's it's disingenuous to me. Legend it's a Zelda, bad, it's DLC, a bad person. Game decision. of the year right now. All right, Robbie, what do we got next? All right, guys. Darksiders 3 has been officially announced this week for release in 2018 on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The game is in development by Gunfire Games, a studio founded by many ex-Vigil members who worked on the first two titles. So this looks really good. I mean, I don't, did you guys looks see? Cool. They, they released like forty-five minutes of gameplay, like a shit ton of gameplay. Considering really? the game, the, yeah, really, I saw up. like there is was. Is it a more like Dark Siders One or Dark Siders Two? Uh, it, it kind of looks like an evil. Oh, I don't know, Robbie, if you had a different view, but to me, it looks like an evil two. Yeah, it sort of does. It almost looks like I watched the gameplay this morning. It was a minute video. It looks really almost like its own thing, though. Just the way its art style is. I mean, it must be a different engine. Thinking too, and it's because it looks different. New generation of console and and on PC too, so it's going to look different. It's super cool though, because your protagonist Fury, she has like this whip. She doesn't really crack it, but it kind of like slings at the enemies. And like there was like this giant like bug dude you had to fight, and he's being carried on like this pedestal by all these little bugs, and you have to kill them. I haven't seen this. It was really cool. Like I thought it was cool. Yeah, it wasn't actually meant to be announced yet either. It was a leak that they had to follow up the next day with the announcement. Yeah, and IGN so. announced it exclusively. Yeah, yeah. The amazing part to me is that, that people never thought this game would actually ever happen because the studio was shut down after you know THQ went bankrupt. No one ever thought this would happen too, which is super cool to me that this game is actually happening because the first two were great. So, well, we got some great stuff coming. Okay, Robbie. Thank Looking you. forward to it. Let's Anyways, go. Ubisoft this week has been teasing something related to far multiple posts on social media. Rumors suggest this is either a remaster of Far Cry 3 or it could be a brand new Far Cry game entirely. Hmm. Have you guys awesome. seen the images? Yes. No. Okay. What do they look like? So basically, it was a like Far Cry 3 kind of image. It was the island, and then it had like the skull underneath it, and it said an island we never really left and there was another tease showing Voss so people are saying maybe this is a whole new Far Cry game that either takes place before or after that storyline maybe this is a remaster of the original game we don't really know Mm. what would you like to see the most well I mean a new game I feel like it would be kind of soon though because Primal came out what just over a year ago Mm -hmm. that would be a quick turnaround I feel like but I mean I'm sure Far Cry 5 will be which really one was cool that Pagan out. Min in the Himalayas? Was that four or three? Four. four. Yeah, it was four. Yeah, I quite like that one. Though. I know no, three. I didn't really, didn't really do much for me. Mm. I mean, I love Far Cry, so I mean, we'll see what it is. I guess I don't know. I I got have a feeling it's just a. Re- I think oh. so because it's five years old. I think it probably will be. So many remasters. The next bit of news is pretty uh, interesting and exciting for those people waiting for the PlayStation Five. Robbie, what do we got next? All right, PlayStation has announced the date and time of its E3 2017 press conference. The conference will be held on Monday, June 12th at 6 p.m. Pacific slash 9 p.m. Eastern time. Well, that's a nice convenient time for us in London then. Was that 3 a.m.? Good. Good time. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. for you guys? Oh, no. Some, some shit like that. Maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m., something. Actually, yeah. I remember that too in years past because this is usually when Sony does their conference at like 6 o'clock. And yeah, the British people would be like, it's fucking 2 a.m. for me. This sucks. So wow, much. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. So let's put our cards on the table then. Are we thinking PlayStation Vita 2? 
Yeah. That's what either, we're going for. Oh my God, Gary, you're nuts. <laughs> or no. either that or the PlayStation yes, 4 that. Pro 2. I think, uh, personally, I think that they're just going to ditch the PlayStation branding entirely and start making games for the Xbox. I mean, it's clearly the way you, forward. You might be right. Obviously, <laughs> yes. Sony's <laughs> next step would clearly be to do that. That's it. They're, they're not going to make a PlayStation 5. They're going full mobile. That's it. It's just yes. going to be... <laughs> They're re re revving up <laughs> that Xperia brand again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Xperia is making a comeback. Horizon oh Zero Dawn is now a mobile-only tap game. Yeah. Where you yeah. Can, oh, my God. Yeah. That sounds so bad. <laughs> They're oh, going to show off some new smart TVs with 3D. They're really, they really decided 4K is not the way for you forward. No. <laughs> 3D was so popular. We're bringing it back. It's going to be our flagship. Yeah. 3D will never happen again unless you see it in the theater. It's over. What about if PlayStation 5 is announced, but it's got an HD DVD drive? Huh? <laughs> Gary. 4, 4K HD DVD. Finally, I can play the, that Superman Returns HD DVD. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's winning. <laughs> you know what? Let's get into it. No bullshitting. Do you guys think PS5 is going to be announced at E3? Straight up. No, I don't. At least teased? Yes. Um, I think... I don't know. It de I think it depends on what Scorpio looks like, but I almost feel like they're flipping a coin at the moment. So is this is after Microsoft's announcement, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing it the day yeah. before at I, 11 I in the like, morning, I want to say. I feel like there's Nine. a slide that's going to say... PlayStation 5 2019 or something else of that nature. 2018, I think, now, if they were teasing it, they'd have know, to say next year. I think they could say to it. I mean, they've, they've teased in God of War, which is a 2018 game, and they teased that last year. Well, so, let me just say this real quick. Final Fantasy VII was teased, yeah, what, that's, 2015? That's, uh, was it 14? It, it may have been 15, but this is something <laughs> that I've actually been working on, on talking to my wife. E3 is won by lies every yeah. year. You know, a perfect example, Shin Yu 3, Final Fantasy VII Remake, years ago it was announced that Sony just blew up and everybody was so excited about them winning E3 on theoretical games that have not come out. God of War, all these games have been shown. Some of them have been completely, uh, they've abandoned, like Xbox has abandoned, what is it, uh, Scalebound? It yeah. was shown at E3, people were really excited about it and hyping E3. They can say anything they want to get people excited and they could later on push it back but if they do it at e3 that's going to stifle a lot of people who are on the fence about buying the scorpio and i think that i think it'll be smart if they do it before the scorpio it's such launch. a risky maneuver piece i could see reaction going either way right it's like yeah it's, it's sweet so we're getting the playstation did, 5 like in 2018 like yeah i'm really excited for that or what the fuck i just spent 400 dollars on the pro yeah exactly like, that's you the know, concern yeah. Like, I can see public reaction going either way. I think huh. saying 2019 may well or behest 2019, I, like, I, so, I actually could see that, yeah. Because that, to me, would say, okay, so now I can go and buy a Pro because I don't have to worry about the PlayStation 5 coming out. Do you know what I mean? If they make that very clear to the market, the PlayStation 5 is coming out, and it's coming out in 2019. You'll find out more next year. If they, if they release the PlayStation, or if they announce PlayStation 5 is coming out in 2018, they're putting the kibosh on PlayStation sales for a year and a half. Yeah. It's yeah. Done. They're not going to sell PlayStation. Yeah, the thing for a year is, and too, half. the only reason I could see them doing 2018 is because Sony said, you know, PS4 Pro is not a new console, really. It's just a more powerful PS4 if you want it. Like, it's optional. That's yeah, what and, they And, and, and imagine, if the, imagine if the PS5 was backwards compatible with the 4, which is something Sony hasn't been really focused on. That'd be a good move as well. You know, either way, either way, I feel like Sony has to do something this year. You know, if they announce it for 2019, that's unabashed sales of the Xbox Scorpio. For the I don't think they years. do, Beastly. I don't think they have to do anything this yeah, year. Yeah, I don't know if they'll, if, if it's 2019, I don't think they'll bring it up. If it is 2018, they'll just tease it. I, even, if I mean, it's, even if they internally know that PlayStation 5 is coming out in 2018, I could very easily see, see them sitting on that information until next spring. I mean, but look, it's the same situation that happened with the Pro. They didn't have to make the, the PlayStation 4 Pro. The Scorpio's not out. They no, didn't, they, they didn't. Been, they could have completely been fine with the PlayStation I think they're just being proactive and looking toward the future, looking for gamers who wanted that next iteration or the highest spec, the most powerful PlayStation on the market. They could theoretically do the same thing. The problem I mean, I is, though, it's, the Pro was, you know, the Pro plays PlayStation 4 games. PlayStation 5 might not necessarily do that, right? So Yeah, it might not. You know, if if they go ahead and announce PlayStation 5 today, 
then that's and it's coming out in holiday of 2018. That's it. 18 months of them yeah. of nobody wanting to buy a PlayStation 4 or Pro because they know the PlayStation 5 is right on the horizon. Well, what about with that's, Scorpio last year with long. Xbox One S right around? They the were. Corner. It's a totally different situation with the Scorpio because they were in second place. They yeah. were not selling mm. Xbox Ones anyway. So why well, not well, try and put a dent? That's not... Why not try and put a dent in the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro's sales and say, hey, you know, they got this thing going on, but we got something. We got fucking all these teraflops wiggling around, man. This thing's going to be the best picture <laughs> you've ever seen. To show you. <laughs> this thing We're going to show like, you all these flops. It's going to be insane. To but and, this is like, I think it was a smart marketing move for second place to do that, but a bad yeah. marketing move for first place to do it. Well, well, this is my question, mm. Briar, and, and I do understand it's perfect sense to me, but no matter what, whenever they announce the next generation of a console, their sales are going to dip. Now, if the PS4 continues to sell the way it's selling, say for instance, they do just as well, 19, fi between 15 and 19 million sales this year, consoles sold. What's a good year to say we need to not worry about this anymore and focus on the future? I mean, they can say, let, let the money come in for the next 10 years because these PS4s are selling like crazy. Yeah. Or they can say, it's a good time. We can, we've done well enough. You know, these PS4s are still going to move. People are still going to buy well, them. Well, that's when you got to look at your, your own sales metrics, right? And your projections. Like, how many are we selling? How many are we projected to sell? How much of an input? How much of a change is it going to be take, when right? the Scorpio comes out? Like, that's that's all done okay. with math as far as I'm concerned. But there's there's going to, and there's going to be a time when lines intersect in such a way that it makes very much sense to announce your PS5, right? PlayStation mm -hmm. 4 sales are low enough that it's not going to affect your bottom line enough or or whatever to announce that PlayStation 5 because yeah. you know like you're not and and also there's one one other thing that I want to bring up real quick when E3 2014 happened what's it 2013 happened uh, when they were talking about the PS4 and the Xbox One and mm -hmm. Shuya Yoshida came out there and they made the funny commercial this is how you share games we're not going to do all that stuff they I think they made a preemptive decision that they were going to judge based on what Xbox did, what their release price was, what they were offering. And I think that they kind of changed their whole conference based on what Xbox did. And, and I by think the, it's not, not even by what Xbox did, but by the reaction, the strong yeah, reaction. People were fucking livid about that. Thing. Yeah. And, and if, if they get a similar reaction, or it probably won't nearly be as bad. But What world would we live in if that PlayStation conference was first and the Xbox conference was second? It like would be what, a completely different what world would we live in right now? It would be a different yeah. world, my friend. It it's on a, a separate world. day, too. You know, usually Microsoft is like the morning, and then Sony's and then that same day. They've got plenty They're of time on a to different figure day this now. out. Um, it's going to be exciting no matter what. And, and even if Sony doesn't come up with a new console, they got tons of new games on the horizon people are excited about. So it's going to be This gonna be great E3 conference. is going to be a big deal. That's the thing with, um, with Sony. We're talking about them winning E3 or not. I don't think Sony needs to do anything i think they've already won the war they don't need to win the battle they could come out at the e3 yeah. stage and just roll out a turd onto the stage and just film well, it for an hour well hopefully they've, they still don't won. they've I, won or they could just they could do the same thing they've been doing at e3 for the last couple of years just games 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 That's exactly games, what they need games. to do Literally yeah. do that again. That's and all everybody they need to do everybody yeah. whether you're watching that conference on the internet or whatever you're just sitting there like yeah, it's overload. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Overload. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. Oh, it's yeah. overload. And you're right, Briar. I mean, they could do that and it would be a wrap as well. I mean, it's exciting. Look at, look at their last E3. They killed it. Yeah. That's, the hardware. Scorpio hardware. Games. Scorpio hardware looks fantastic. But what the fuck are you going to play on that thing? Yeah. Halo 5. They got to show us. Here's a war for I mean, Jokes aside, my, my Vita 2 re suggestion, I actually I, I spoke to you guys before the conference, there was a patent put out, wasn't there, for a new variant of the handheld by Sony? Yeah, similar to the I, Nintendo yeah. Switch. Middle of last year with a more legitimate controller. Yeah. I'm still banking that the Vita is still massive. I've mentioned it a few podcasts, but massively supported in Japan. I still think that the Vita as an accessory to the PS4, a remote play machine, is a unique factor that the Xbox does not have. Smart glass is not remote play. If they could create a way with you know micro SD cards maybe as a slot, a kind of a, 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 re, a new form factor of the Vita geared up primarily for remote play first and gaming second as a proprietary system, Ooh. that could that could really make the PS4 you know complement the PS4 in a strong way. And you know, we've got a real legitimate remote play machine here. 
five gigahertz Wi-Fi, all the things that you need to make it proper remote play. Let me ask you a question, Gary, because it, it seems like you're real serious about this. I talked about for a while, a few months ago with the guys, and nobody really took it serious. Do you think there's a, a real possibility that Sony's moving towards a Vita 2? I don't think there will be a Vita 2 um, on the basis that the Vita is still adequate hardware enough for the games that are popular on it, which are the JRPGs, the visual novels, like those those can still be banged out on the hardware that's there. It's still perfectly capable. I think that there's room for a, a new form factor because we've only had one body revision of the Vita in five years. Um, and people are, are seeing, at least in the West, that they're still printing Vita Remote Play on the back of every single cartridge. Um, every single game that's sold on the PS4 still gets that Remote Play icon, Remote Play compatible. Mm -hmm. If it's a system that's been discontinued in the West, as they say, why would they continue to enforce this must be remote play must remote play and my view is that there's going to be some more legs in the vita but i don't think it's going to be a vita 2 i think sony recognize that their playstation brand as a console a home console is strong uh, and to complement that with accessories that bring out your remote play feature makes more sense to me they didn't even mention an e3 last year right no no but then they're still forcing developers to add remote play capability to every single game yeah it, it seems to me a little bit ludicrous, especially for Western games. I see your, your wheels turning, Briar. What do you think about this, man? I'm just, you know, like, I like the Vita. I like the revision, too, of the Vita, I should say. I actually fucking hate the first Vita. I, think. Mm. I mean, like I said, if Awful. you ditched the rear touchpad <laughs> and you added L3, yeah. R3 clickable thumbsticks and you added an R2, L2 trigger to it, you gave Perfect. it 5 five gigahertz Wi-Fi, micro SD card, so completely binned off the PlayStation. I don't think they can cards. ditch that touchpad because there's games that rely on it. Certain <sighs> games do, but you could just map it to the front touchpad potentially. There'd be work for it because PlayStation TV lets you do it in different ways. So there'd be a way oh, to yeah, do it. Oh, yeah, good point. That's a good point. I would so, buy a third revision. I'm not going to lie. But wow. I'd buy pretty much like every console. And, and and Gary would buy five copies of the third revision. Every color, yeah. And yes. there's no reason that you couldn't make the screen a 720p screen as well. I mean, it's Never, 544p, so. We, we better keep Gary away from those like colorware sites that like spray paint your fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> Literally, guys. I don't know. Every it's interesting, Gary. I just I can't see them. Like they just aren't having success with the hardware platform. I, I can't imagine in, them doubling down West, on it again. If the West isn't successful, but the East is, you've got to please both markets. And the fact that they're still heralding remote play as a proposition to me, and it is still a unique proposition, I don't see how they can continue to tout remote play on a five-year-old device that is obsolete. The the Xperia phones are being phased out. So they're not remote playing on them. Don't you remind can, me, Gary. You know, you can remote play on PC, granted, but that's still not this take it on the go proposition. I, I don't know why you'd continue to support remote play. You wouldn't face When's it. When's the last time any of you guys use a remote play feature? I'm going to go first and say the first, last time I used it was years ago on Destiny. And there was that too. Yeah. I use it daily, literally daily. When I play my PS4, unless I'm playing, I'm playing it remotely. I just feel like you're still you know, like in the honeymoon period, though, Gary. Give yeah, it a year. Yeah, I, yeah you know? I, I think, I think, Gary, you know, you're kind of the exception at this point. I mean, after all, in the last month, you bought four PlayStation Vitas. Um, I, I think people who've been five. I'm sorry. Uh, I think people who've been playing the Vita for years don't really use it for that anymore. And I, I mean, I know they print it on the back of every game that comes out for the PS4, but for the most part. If you've got a TV, you want to play your PS4 game on a TV, unless you've got, you know, one of these extenuating circumstances where you're taken away from it, which it might work, but a lot of people see that as an issue due to latency on the Vita from the PS4, which is something that, that I noticed initially when I first tried it years ago. And it might be different now, and it's, of course, different for every player, but I just, I feel like, like Briar said, I think you're kind of in the honeymoon phase of this well, no, thing. I'll give you my my um, rationale for it. And at home, I like to play it because I can sit with my fiance on the couch or up in bed and I can continue to play my games in the same way that she's a, a really big um, handheld and portable player on the 3DS. So she can do that. I don't have to ostracize myself and put myself in front of the TV or the monitor. Um, also, when I'm at work, I always leave my PS4 in rest mode now. So I've got Persona 5 on there. As long as I'm in a Wi-Fi hotspot, which my whole office block has got Wi-Fi and good Wi-Fi on it, I can sit there and play Persona 5. And if there is 100 MS latency, which I don't even think it's that bad because it's not noticeable, as long as I'm not playing a competitive shooter, I can live with that. And it lets me play another hour of Persona 5 at work 
and then I can come home and continue that game. To me, it is a, com a completely mind blowing proposition. And Maybe I should try that more often because I got that would be if it. Gary, fuck, you always sell us new shit. You, you, you sell <laughs> us good at it, right? Make us you sell us fucking old natural old salesman. <laughs> he sells us old shit and makes it new and sparkly. He's like, now I want to take my video to work. I want you know, sit at my desk. He comes into my chat on Twitch, and I'm like, suddenly I'm not looking at the chat anymore. I'm on Amazon while I'm streaming. Yeah. Thinking, Man, this thing looks fucking awesome. Right. <laughs> Before I met Gary, you talked about Gary like after the show, and you're like, I'm buying this. I'm buying the fucking Oculus. Gary talked me into it. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I mean, I, I was really like, who is this guy who talked to you to buy an $80? As far as I know, he's been working for Amazon this whole time. <laughs> he <probably is. laughs> he's yeah. been doing a great job at selling the products. Now, I, I'm wow. not even fucking right. I swear. Look, just that quickly, I feel like he just did like a Vulcan thing or just <laughs> fucked my mind fucking up. Mind now, you. <laughs> I'm going I'm gonna to be fucking taking my Vita to work tomorrow. I'm leaving my PS4 and Respo just so I can tinker around with it. Just so I can come back next week and say, Gary, you are fucking right. God I mean, damn it. There's a couple of things you can do for quality of life factors. I mean, we, we, I'm not going to bang on about the Vita. You spoke about it last time, but you know these little uh, extenders that I've got on the sticks? Mm -hmm. So these yeah. are significant improvements, uh, almost like control freaks for the Vita. That helps the stick um, significantly. I have those play, too. They are so much better than the regular sticks. If you play sticks. games that don't use uh, the back touchpad as frequently, like Persona or other things, turn-based games, there's no reason that, that the, the Vita isn't a perfectly adequate system for it. Uh, also, you can the get, second you know, version of it is really a comfortable handheld system. I've never, been, like, I've never like even it. held the second version. Never it's very been. nice. Because oh. It's a big, a big improvement. And you can pick them up very, very cheaply. People are getting rid of them. You know, if you pick it up secondhand on apparently in a right. bunch of different colors. <laughs> well, you got that right. Buying them all. You got that right. I mean, they're you know they're, in, they're imports, so it's slightly different. But yeah, I mean, if you can get one of the revisions, to me, the Vita as a console, I've I've praised it enough. But as a, a PS4 accessory. I'm very, very surprised it has not been bundled at this point here with any of the PS4 revisions. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I'm very surprised. Right, I want to move on to the next story. Sorry. Apparently, the price of used Vitas is going up tremendously after a huge buying spree coming out of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, the UK. <laughs> well, this is all I know, guys. And I'm going to tell everybody in the comments, do this. If you have a PlayStation Vita and you need to get a can of spray paint, yeah, spray that bitch up. Make sure it looks nice. Take some pictures. Put it on Amazon and Gary will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> sad, sad but true, probably. <laughs> Paint it like hot pink, too. If oh, you include a button it. with a matching color, you probably yeah. double the price. <laughs> oh, yeah. It will be on his uh, Twitter feed within an hour. Yeah. Guys, I got this brand new Vita. No, actually, that's just a spray paint of Vita, Gary. <laughs> it's the same one you already have. All right. Need what else we got for news here? Um, Jump me to whip through them quick. Oculus. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Gary. Uh, Oculus Story Studio, the award-winning studio behind VR shorts such as Dear Angelica and Henry, which I spoke a few weeks ago and was blown away by, is unfortunately shutting down. The studio's 50 staff oh. are now looking for new jobs within Oculus, and the justification behind that is that Oculus are now looking to refocus their development time on making third-party games compatible with the Oculus rather than developing them in-house so this is the quill studio what do we think about that that's a bummer anytime you lose your job it's it's a, a, a tough situation i feel for them but you know they're talented people they're obviously working in the right place and utilizing their skills i'm sure that oculus will find new and exciting uses for them hopefully this is one of the selling points of oculus is that they had uh they had their own in studio yeah. you know like uh, they had they were spending money on development of games for the oculus which is kind of the big difference between them and steam steam weren't doing that originally it seems like they've turned changed their mind about that and are now developing games specifically for vr but like this was one of the big selling points for oculus so i'm really surprised to see him turn around on this and zuckerberg's reiterated this week as well that vr is a 10-year plan so i think there's a little bit of uh retreading away i mean it, it was ironic because earlier in the week before the studio was shut down facebook confirmed that five percent of their staff are working on vr specifically which works out to about 1100 people so there wow. was a significant commitment working Whoa. to the oculus brand um, and now it seems like zuckerberg shying away from it and pulling back and saying you know maybe it was a full start this year it's a 10-year plan guys with the oculus brand so i don't know this is you know 
one of the big hopes for me was that those Oculus games were going to be like bigger, fuller experiences than what we're seeing a lot of VR games that are released. So a lot of the VR games are these, you know, tech demos and little shooters and, you know, little, little tiny experiences. What I'm really hoping for is more experiences like Resident Evil 7, you know, and along those lines where, you know, I can just fully immerse myself into a real video Absolutely. game. Absolutely. You know, for you know, like I like I feel like I'm getting like a full producti- produ- pr- fully produced video game, like of the level of Resident Evil Seven, and with them closing this studio down, it seems a little less likely now. Mm. Okay, quick a uh, couple of quick stories to whip through. Uh, it's more just information for the Donkey Kong and Pokemon Red and Green have been inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame this week, so big news really for people that feel old i remember we spoke about donkey kong last week and pokemon red and green i I grew up with you know they were or red and blue i guess for for us in the west um you know they're now considered i guess hall of fame worthy games they join the likes of halo and street fighter 2 which i think was on the honorable mentions list red deserves to be in there green is just a travesty that shouldn't be anywhere near the hall of fame (laughs) really really (laughs) I mean, they're oh. worthy games. Maybe Donkey Kong Country isn't, depending on your your view. I Wait, think. it's Donkey Kong Country, not yeah. Donkey Kong? No, Donkey, Donkey Country, Kong. Briar. Uh-oh. No. Oh, my God. I already tell Briar. Yeah, yeah. I knew you'd be Whatever. Upset People love that game. What, what the fuck do I care? Yeah, Briar, why don't you love that game, too? Don't you love it, too? No. Wow, so, so Tomb Raider. Your opinion? Tomb Raider. That's okay. they, they mentioned other games here, but Tomb Raider and Resident Evil were, uh, they did not make the final list. Resident Evil didn't make it, in. and Donkey Kong Country did. It doesn't say Donkey Kong Country; it just says Donkey Kong. Uh, it's Donkey Kong, the original. I was just oh, being okay. uh, emphasis. Fucking, <laughs> fucking <Poor> monkey! <laughs> um, so you know, also if I had said that, I would have been braided a racist. <laughs> Got that right? <laughs> <laughs> Only eyes can say monkey around here. <laughs> You people. Fuck, man. <laughs> you people. <laughs> you God, fucking Donkey Kong guys? country loving people. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Right. Oh, so, um, for fans of video game history as well, the Nintendo PlayStation is really working. That's the famous uh, prototype that surfaced after being developed in the 1990s. The, um, the cartridge slot used to work. They've now been. Ben Heck, I believe, uh, is the, the guy responsible for this, has worked to get the CD ROM drive working. So. Oh. Yep. It's been realized now the product is is functional for Ross's this video least. last night. He did a lot of work on that thing working and games that are actually, it's called the super um, is a super disc. I think that's what it's called. Something like that. When you started yeah, up, yeah. Um, it, they're playing actual ROMs on there. So there was really never a disc game that was crafted for it, but they were able to get some ROM based disc to work. So they know it actually works and it, it boots up and it goes through all kinds of BIOS and things. It would be really, it would have been great if someone, a developer all those years ago had actually crafted something for it so we could have seen what they intended this thing to be. But it's a great little piece of video game history. I watched this a very long video and all the, this thing working and, you know, it kind of hit me at a sweet spot that, you know, this thing at some point in time was going to be a reality in the second. Probably one of the smartest things Sony ever did was pulled out of that deal. So I think Nintendo actually pulled out of the deal. Their pull-off uh, game was pretty good. They pulled out. and They pulled, uh, Sony, they pulled out Sony, clean. Sony, Sony changed history. I don't know if it was clean, but, you know, there was some drama. Yeah, but, yeah. It's a good but, time. Uh, Same so as it could be. We've got two more articles left, guys, so please bear with us. You can all tab to your favorite adult site very, very soon. So uh, <laughs> we're still going through it. Yes. Got that's it another the radio. thing I'm doing after the not, show. Pornhub is so. ready to be clicked. Uh, well, there are others mind, available. Sorry. There are others available. Thanks for letting us know, Gary. Yeah. Um, Chinese gaming regulations have forced Blizzard Entertainment to open up around Overwatch loot box uh, probabilities of giving you epics. So this is um, great news for people mm. that play Overwatch because I, I would guess that they're global probabilities, not just Chinese probabilities, which tell you now that there's one in every 5.5 boxes give you an epic. The news, I guess, why this is interesting is not just for Overwatch, but more broadly for other games that are played in China, this will also apply. So any Call of Duties when the legislation passes to them, Destiny for silver purchases, um, anything that you that there is in-game currency for, uh, the Chinese authorities are now pressing that you as wow. gamers will know the probabilities. I like this law. This is this seems like a smart <laughs> law. So many, this is, you know, 
it just seems like you know more information for the consumer just seems smart. I do wonder though, Gary, if they will change the probabilities. Like, first of all, <laughs> in China will, specifically, that's right? It. Well, will they change the probabilities based on cons- cu- customer reaction? Right. So, like, once we see them for the first time, will they be adjusted? Um, to be, you know, going forward, once the customers know the probabilities, and then also, will they be adjusted specifically for the Chinese market? Just because they have to share that information, and meanwhile, every other market where they don't have to share it has a different probability. Well, there's been outcry already, um, Briar, in the League of Legends space. So, League, um, some of the, the, I guess, the mystery boxes, the rarest items in there, two of them have got uh, less than one percent drop rate mm-hmm. on these boxes, which I think are somewhere in the region of six dollars a purchase. So, you know, you're talking potentially six hundred dollars to get this item. Uh, oh, so baby. there's already some outcry. It's too early to figure out how it's going to go, but I think you make a fair point. Whether or not we see China having, you know, the land of luck for online purchases, or whether or not some of this more, um, I guess, you know, where they're extorting the consumer a little bit more, the probabilities will be like ten percent baseline minimum. I don't know. I will say that for the most part, I side with the game companies on this stuff. As long as there's, it's all cosmetic. It's not as long as it doesn't affect gameplay. I really don't care if there is super rare stuff that you have to, you know, you have to either a play the game forever to get or b pay a bunch of money to get. It really doesn't bother me. Yeah, it's I think there's the right way to do it, and then there's the wrong way. Especially, Everybody's got to make a living, you know. Yeah, yeah. I agree, one hundred percent with you, Brad. But as soon as you add pay to win, I'm no longer on your side. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> You've lost me. So our last point, um, I know that we're we're very heavily on the PlayStation Ooh, box I... and Ghost in the chat. Um, so thank you to Ghost who reminded me of it earlier midway through. Did you guys see the Sea of Thieves news that was uh, released this week? There's been no, no, no I, I so. did not. I did not. We're not biased in any way towards any console pla- podcast in any way. I think this is evidence of it. All the people following their Xbox news, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, Microsoft's um, Redmount Studios have, have actually been very, very hard at work on this Sea of Thieves. To me, Sea of Thieves did not look like a game that I was in any way excited about. It wasn't something that mm. I thought was great. There was that video that was put out about a year ago, I think it was at E3, of a load of YouTubers screaming about it, going, oh my god, I can shoot It a wasn't even though. funny either. It was, it was awkward. Like, it, it was, was strange. I don't know. It was stupid, yeah. So, the... Sea of Thieves team have been working hard on NDA alphas uh, and small collective sample testing uh, with, you know, guys that really know how to work this game and can show the potential of it. And it looks and feels, I mean, Phil Spencer went down to um, a a showing and they've released the footage of it, him playing with four of the developers. And they've released some of this footage and it looks like a MMO open world sandbox pirate game where you and a load of buddies work together to do you know, pretty much anything you can in a pirate world. I mean, this... loot, working through it. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, potential is there. Yeah, it be looks cool. stunning. And I, you know, the gameplay loop that was on there in a Breath of the Wild way, they said, and they've been. You now they actually mentioned that Zelda had heavily in- influenced them to look. Really? At, yeah, they, they mentioned it on the thing. They said they've been heavily <sighs> Zelda to look at if it's possible. Can you do it? Uh, and the answer always has to be yes, because once it's a no, you break immersion. So there's, there's certain things like if you've got a crew of, of four guys and your ship starts taking on water, one guy's got to put his like hand over the thing. Another one's got to start tipping water out with a bucket. What? It's, God, it's, I love that. It's this crazy. And there's proximity chat as well. So if you take on another pirate ship, you can start talking. The other people can hear nearby. Like, this is our <laughs> ship now, bitches. Get off the ship, you know. <laughs> Get off the um, ship, bitch. If you're if you're approaching a ship at night, you can turn off all the light on your ship and fly silent and drop the flag so that you approach the other ship completely stealthily. Um, finding treasure on islands as well. There's no mini map. There's no markers. You actually have to hold up a cloth map and look at the landmarks and try to decide if this area looks like it and dig for pirate treasure. You've got to store all your treasure on your boat so your boat becomes an asset that you're floating with rather than something that's disposable. Uh, it looks stunning. You know, cannons are a three-person job. Wow. So one person's loading the ball in, another person's stoking the uh, the other thing, and one person's aiming. It's stunning. They, they've designed it as a social open-world sandbox. That sounds incredible, Brian. This is not what I expected at all. This sounds like it, it, it might be the next must-have Xbox One game. Wow. Yeah. 
it is going to be the next big drop for it, but I'd recommend you oh, all can't go. can't wait to see it. I think it's quite a lengthy video. It's about 15 minutes long, um, the, the part that was released from the um, under, under NDA, but it's worth watching. It really has got me hyped for it, and I didn't think I'd care about... I'm being straight about Xbox. I didn't think I'd care about a Microsoft game this year. Uh, wow. Really yeah, is. I think a lot of us are feeling that way right now, but yeah. I think Phil Spencer's got some shit coming. It sounds like a bunch of... Phil, Xbox. he's a smart man. He's a handsome dude. He... He is. Well, I, I know about the smart part, but I mean, the only handsome guys I know are you. Oh. That far, Robbie. Well, I'm just, okay. I was just being just, nice. Just but, drop oh. it, Robbie. I'm not trying to like show a man love or something. I'm just saying he, he's what's, a sharp what's, looking dude. That's all. What's he's man, what's man executive. love? Executive. That's all I'm saying. You guys I'm, just take it out of context. Uh, I can't yeah. believe this. I don't even know what man love is. Shame. I think there'll I be do. plenty of man love I on do. there. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> Briar's had that experience. There's going to be plenty of man love at Sea at Sea and Thieves with this crew, I tell you. Yeah, that's that's... Oh my God, so much. <laughs> what goes You're on at Sea stays at Crazy scene. shit in that game. Yeah. But no, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm down I to nominate Gary to sing the much. shanties. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. We'll just be sailing at sea, you know? I'm going to bring the rum or something. But no, the pirate <laughs> fantasy, for me, it's. I like the idea of it being a social MMO and I cannot wait to get a crew like us together, friends on a boat and just, you know, going out into the high seas and just making our, our future in the world, you know. It's, it's... Oh man, we're going to be hijacking boats, we're going to be stealing some plunder, it's going to be great. Mm. Wenches, Drinking man, beer. it's all about or, I mean, the wenches. rum. rum. Doing it plunder. all for the wenches. <laughs> <laughs> all for the wenches. <laughs> Listen guys, this episode has been one of my favorite episodes and if you guys like to hear us talk shit about video games constantly, you can do it now on our new podcast on podbean there is a link in the description here live on twitch there will also be the link uh, links in our descriptions on our youtube videos as well be sure to click on those links listen to us make your mom and dad listen go to church make your pastor listen because beastly thought show needs to be heard by the world mm -hmm. definitely wow yeah. i just i just i just pasted it just now yep watch us live you know you can watch the youtube version podbean the itunes all the ways you want to watch it there, there are certain available. people in the world who only support Apple products, Mr. Rabbit, uh, and for people <clears> like that, that's it's right. Only... A PC, I'm, like this whole thing is happening on a PC. Someone you didn't want it though. You loved your mask. You <laughs> we know you did. We know you did. Someone did forced me to do it. Yes. Yeah. You know who forced me to do it? Is Apple's. They don't make fucking computers for me anymore. <laughs> fucking Apple. Apple. Fucking Apple. Just... Sucks a big one. I don't know. I miss you, Steve. I, I, I got a question miss you, for baby. Everybody. <laughs> I got a question for everybody watching. Pouring one out for Steve right now. <laughs> what do you guys think we'll see at E3 this year? Leave it your comments in the comments below on here on Twitch or on YouTube. Let us know what you think the big exciting news could possibly be. And we alluded to possible them. we alluded to possible PS5 uh, uh, PlayStation Vita 2 or a new iteration of Sony's handheld which allows greater functionality with remote play. What do you guys think we'll see this year at E3? What's the most exciting news that you could possibly imagine coming from these conferences? Please let us know in the comments below. And as always, thank you all so much for hanging out with the Beastly crew today. Uh, we had more fun doing this today than we've probably done in years. And uh, it's been just a great show. We spent the first hour talking about what we've been playing. And, <laughs> and yep. that never, ever happened. So I, I really want to express my gratitude for you guys hanging out with us. And with that, the rest of the guys can talk their shit yeah. to you. Thank you all so much. And I just wanted to say one quick thing is that we just talked about it earlier. I think next week is going to be a big E3 prediction show. Guys, um, tonight when we're done, I'm going to talk to you probably on Twitter. We'll figure out how we want to do this, whether we want to do like a you know top five predictions for each conference, who knows? Save it for Twitter, God damn it! it yeah, I mean, we'll save it for thing, Twitter. We will figure it out, and next week will be awesome. We are gonna blow it out. We are gonna come up with all Episode the crazy Vita two and Half Life three predictions. They're gonna be there. So, yeah, you'll want to so tune in next that, week. That'll it's gonna be, be awesome. Episode one fifty three next week. Mm -hmm. You guys, yes. be prepared. Yes. It's gonna be because we're still in that coasting phase. Yeah, we're like at the top of the bell curve. Straight, and then we're gonna go <laughs> straight down. Straight down. <laughs> Thanks, Briar. I'm Sam. <laughs> and then uh, and and at the bottom, it will kind of like, it'll be one for like five or six episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, uh, episode zero. If anyone predicts erections, 
uh, that's disqualified because that's a goddamn guarantee for next week. So no. <laughs> It, it oh, happened yeah. this. It no, happened no, this no. episode at least three or four it, times. It happens every episode. Every, I, I don't actually have a mic stand. That's what's holding this up. It's just dumb. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Gary! Just yes. balanced, balanced on it like a Russian athlete. You know, it's dumb. <laughs> god damn, Gary, that's hardcore shit. And with that, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. I do want to thank uh, a couple of subscribers before we go. Sniper Panda zero seven. Thank you for eight months of subs. And it's Daniel Casket resub for 11 months as well. So thank you guys very much. And there was a generous $10 donator as well, bro. I, don't know was you... I missed that. It was. I'm oh surprised he threw money at me. I felt like taking my pants off. That's what I normally do when someone. Thank I you so much. When it happened. I know. Done. Uh, all right. So I think that's going to do it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.